Good evening, everyone. If you could uh, take a seat, we'll begin the Board of Selectmen's meeting for February 27th, 2017. Uh, first, we will go to the emergency addendum, ad addendum, addendum, <laughs> addendum, uh, for approval, vote to authorize borrowing MWRA $200,000. We have our treasurer, Mr. Gilligan, I believe, here tonight. Name and, posi name and position for the record. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Stephen Gilligan, Treasurer and Collector of Taxes for the Town of Harlem. Uh, Madam Chairman and members, I, I thank you for the t your time this evening. The reason for the emergency addendum is that the bonds arrived, the bond certificates arrived later than your Thursday night deadline, but a week earlier than they were supposed to. And we thought it prudent to, as the saying goes, go for the money. So you are asked to approve and to sign the bond certificates for $200,000 for an MWRA water bond, which is of no interest, zero interest and no cost to the town. Um, and this is for projects that the board is aware of and that have been appropriated through town meeting. We're just able to borrow the money through the MWRA instead of a general obligation bond, which carries interest. And if the board has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by? Sec second. Mr. Kiro, uh, any questions or comments from my colleagues? If Mr. Greeley? Yes, uh, just a comment that I'd like to ask the crowd here to give this gentleman a rousing round of applause. He's decided not to run again for treasurer after 30 years of service to this community, chair of the Conservation Commission, former member of the Board of Selectmen, and has been our treasurer for how long? 11 years. For 11 years. Thank you, Mr. Gilligan. Okay, he hasn't always been right, but I love the guy. <laughs> we can talk, Mr. Green. <laughs> I thank the board for its time. Thank you very much. Okay, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go to the meeting agenda for approval, Comcast license renewal. Uh, I believe we have Attorney Marr here from our Cable Advisory Committee. Just name and position for the record, please. Yes, John Marr, uh, Chairman of the Cable Advisory Committee. Uh, you all know what a thrill it is for me to be before you and look forward to this <sighs> hyperventilating, just, just thrilled to be here. But in any event, we do have a, a recommended uh, license extension for Comcast for a period of 10 years, effective date to be October 2016, of course, subject to your approval. Uh, it was, a, uh, as expected, a very contentious uh, negotiation sessions, which they tend to be. Um, the principal aspects of it was essentially carrying forward the existing provisions with a couple of changes. Uh, the major provision, of course, is the 5% of gross revenues that uh, Comcast derives from Arlington subscribers to be uh, earmarked for uh, ACMI. Uh, most of the issues that we talked uh, about Comcast with, and as, as a matter of fact, with all the cable companies, is what can we get for ACMI for them to continue their most excellent work in providing uh, cable access, uh, community service uh, through their uh, several channels. Uh, we, uh, all of the 5% uh, goes to ACMI to fund their ongoing expenses, but one of the principal components also is to uh, augment their uh, new technology and getting them some additional money for the capital improvements, and that was a, a major a source of contention. Uh, Comcast actually wanted to reduce the amount of uh, uh, capital expenditures from the existing 400,000, but over a period of time, led by the town manager and our very capable outside counsel, Peter Epstein, and with very strong support of Doug Heim, uh, town council, we were able to increase that from 400 to 500,000. Other provisions of the contract are a, what is called a level playing field. Level playing field means that if for any reason we negotiate a different set of financial terms for the other contracts, uh, be our, being RCN or Verizon, we would have to go back and uh, revisit the Comcast uh, license. This is a very common provision. Um, the Comcast uh, was, had a uh, service that I net uh, for the community, uh, for the town. It was uh, just not used, and, but they were required under the license to maintain it. Dave Good informs us that it was very, if ever, used. So 
<clears throat> we were uh, we told Comcast that we would relieve them from that responsibility upon the payment of twenty five thousand dollars. That goes to the general fund, not the ACMI. Um, so uh, those are the principal uh, provisions. It's for a ten year license, and uh, be happy. Uh, there are some minor provisions uh, which I think are set forth in the town manager's memo. If you have any questions, comments, we'd be very glad to try to respond. Uh, and if you are so inclined after your comments to uh, approve it, I would propose a motion. Mr. Greeley? Yeah, I just want to uh, thank John and uh, the committee. You do finally have a senior discount to which the answer from Comcast has been solidly no for all these years. It's not as, it's, it's not as good as I'd like, but nonetheless, I know that you had to work hard to make that happen. So thank you very much. Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much, and thank, thank you also to you and the committee for all the hard work on this. I know I did flag a few issues, and I, I funneled them through the, the um, uh, town manager and the town council. My understanding is that, they, that there has been resolution on them. One is uh, just as with, with the RCN contract, ensuring that the um, non-discrimination clause in the, in the Comcast um, <clears throat> contract for service um, referenced um, local law as well as state and federal law. And my understanding is that Comcast has uh, agreed to that. Correct. And that's an excellent point. Uh, something that I sh should have picked up on before, but we appreciate you calling that to our attention. It has been incorporated, and Comcast has agreed to it. Thank you. I, I, wa I wanted to say that um, I, I'm disappointed that Comcast did, did not agree to um, HD service for the, the uh, public access uh, channels for ACMI, but I, I appreciate you on, on the other end uh, getting some additional capital for this, and I, I think that's probably good compensation. And just the last point that I had, the question I had raised with uh, town manager, um, I know that the, the list of public buildings that will receive service through this contract did not specifically include the Gibbs, which will be a public school, but my understanding is that uh, some of the language does address that, that, that future public school buildings will be yeah, we can add uh, certain buildings, uh, essentially at the town's behest, and we will certainly do that when Gibbs comes online. Uh, I, 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 you're correct that we were not able to get either HD or video on demand from Comcast. The only statement I can make with regard to that, I have not agreed to that with any of the communities in, in the Commonwealth. Uh, RCN, as you know, did that. Uh, we're going to be pressing hard with Verizon. We like to think that RCN has a little bit of a, a competitive edge because they have agreed to, to provide that for local access. Uh, at least that's what we hope. And uh, we will continue those efforts. And if it becomes feasible or any other communities get it during the course of the license, we'll certainly pursue Comcast. Notwithstanding the fact that we have a signed license, we're able to reopen that and, uh, and, and take a hard look at that if we get any indication at all that they are uh, relenting with, uh, with regard to any other community. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I do want to say, Mr. Marr, uh, on behalf of my colleagues on the board, um, we've been through several cable advisory, renewal, um, committee meetings, reports, et cetera. Uh, I think this has been one of the most sort of fruitful uh, in terms of concessions that the Cable Advisory Committee and yourself have been able to negotiate. Um, I certainly appreciate the uh, resolution of the longstanding INET issue um, because that sort of has been on the table uh, at least twice when we've gone through this and we now have some resolution on that and, and in accordance with the concessions that you negotiated on that as well as my colleagues' points to the Gibbs and, and the uh, senior rate, et cetera. And I, I am very pleased that you have sort of a placeholder in set in motion in terms of any reciprocity with Verizon or any other communities. Um, and I know this is, a, as everyone else does, a committee of volunteers like everybody else in Arlington that we have, but um, I have to say I'm really impressed by the concessions you were able to get. You didn't get everything, but you got almost everything, so thank you so much. And if you, uh, if, unless my colleagues have further questions, I think if you have any comments or a suggested motion. I do have a suggested motion. I just want to say thank my colleagues uh, on the Cable Advisory Committee, uh, Mike Quinn and Dave Good, Jossie, uh, and those three individuals are, have voted uh, unanimous. We have voted unanimously to recommend approval. And the motion would be to uh, approve as licensing authority uh, the uh, extension of the Comcast license to be effective on October 1st, 
2016 to expire September 30th, 2026. And I'll be back at that time to, uh, to review that. So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. Burley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Uh, any further questions and comments? Um, anybody here? Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Chapdelaine, town manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do believe the board should take a separate vote to authorize the uh, signing of the INET decommissioning agreement as well. Okay, so uh, on the for first motion by Mr. Greerly, seconded by Mr. Byrne to approve the contract October 1st, 2016 through September 30th, 2026. Any further questions and comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And the appropriate wording for the INET. Yes, and I would do a vote. Uh, both a motion to approve the uh, execution of the discontinuance of the INET in return for $25,000 payment to the town. So so moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Um, yep. Any further questions and comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Attorney Maher. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have consent agenda for those um, it may be your first time and hopefully not your last time here. These are really perfunctory uh, agenda items. I'll go through them rather quickly and hopefully not stumble over too many. And usually um, there aren't many speakers, but I do believe at least one um, item under the consent agenda I will be calling on an individual. So our consent agenda are... The minutes of the meeting, February 6, 2017, and request from the Patriots Day Committee events, April 23, 2017, for approval to sandwich boards for Shoot the Cure 2017, March 17 through March 25th. Jennifer Tripp, President and Jennifer <coughs> Goodwin Clerk. A request from Arlington High School ice cream fundraiser for Dana Faber Cancer Institute. Uh, on the Jefferson Cutter House lawn, May 20th, 2017, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tarangana Thapa, P Patrick O'Toole, Jeremiah Jacob Dolan, and the Arlington High School Scoops Club, an appointment to our Transportation Advisory Committee, associate member to full member, Michael Gordon, reappointments, Board of Registrars, John L. Warden III, term to expire 331-2020, Adele Krauss, term to expire 331-2019, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license, March 10, 2017, at Robbins Library for Books in Bloom, Sally Nash and Patsy Kramer from the Books in Bloom Fundraiser Committee. A request special one-day beer and license, March 11, 2017, Robbins Memorial Town Hall for Beats for Eats Fundraiser, Laura Ledger and Vicki Rose from the Arlington <coughs> Eats Committee. A request special one-day alco one alcohol license, March 18, 2017, at Arlington Catholic High School for Quiz Night, Aaron Simmons, the development coordinator for the Arlington Catholic High School. And then we have appointments of new election workers. Mark DeRosa, 15 Cornell Street. Precinct 12, Elizabeth Diggins, 208 Renfrew Street. Precinct 12, Lynn Gallagher, 6 Hawthorne Avenue. Precinct 18. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. Moved by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Byrne. I believe Mr. Bose may be here. If you could just state your name and address position for the record and what consent agenda item you're here for. Uh, Bob Bowes, 26 Lakeview, volunteer member of the Patriots Day Parade Committee. And I'm here requesting permits for three events to occur that day. Um, I have the pleasure and privilege of serving with a wonderful group of volunteers for the committee. Uh, they bring you two messages tonight. Number one, we expect to have a fabulous parade this year. And number two, we believe we'll have blue skies and 75 degrees, so it should be good. Uh, we have three different requests tonight. One is for um, events that occur all on Sunday, April 23rd. Uh, the first is the 53rd running of the Fun Day Run for Patriots Day. It begins at the Arlington Lexington Line at 8.45 a.m. on Sunday morning and runs to the Arlington Boys and Girls Club. At noontime, we have the historic reenactment at the Jason Russell House. And then at 2 p.m., the parade kicks off at uh, approximately Brattle Street. And that will go until 5 p.m. Uh, we will arrange to have uh, sufficient police forces uh, engaged for that day to provide for public safety. And if you approve those, I have two more requests. So if we approve, if approved, um, we would like the board to alert through media the MBTA commuting citizens that the buses normally operating along Mass Avenue 
We'll be using alternate routes along the parade route from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. And again, if so approved, um, that the Board of Selectmen meet prior to the April 23rd parade meeting to publicly thank our diamond and platinum sponsors. The parade committee will have recognition plaques to present to these sponsors who've made the 2017 Patriot's Day parade possible. Mr. Dunn? Uh, very excited, and I just want to be clear. So the parade this year is essentially a week later than usual because of Easter. So it's the 23rd. It yeah. Excellent. So it's interesting. The Lexington Parade will still occur on the day after Easter. Uh, what's interesting is we've now found that certain bands and people we couldn't have in the past may be now be more available to us, which is great news. But everything occurs on Sunday, April 23rd. And in, in terms of the logistics, Mr. Chapdelaine, um, I believe in the past the committee has worked with uh, the Board of Selectmen and Town Manager's Office in terms of notification of MBTA and police services, so we'll just continue with the same? Correct. Okay, so that'll be that. And uh, I'll make it a point that the uh, Selectmen's meeting immediately prior to the Patriot's Day Parade, this will be an agenda item at the beginning of... Uh, okay the meeting, because I know you all have other things to do there. So when we take our vote for consent agenda, inherent in that will be those three actions that you specifically asked of us, if that's okay. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Um, and I just want to check, if, is there anyone else here from the consent agenda that wanted to speak to their particular agenda item? Can you just come name and address and event for the record, please? Hi, I'm uh, Jen Tripp, 328 Park Ave, Arlington. Jennifer Goodwin, 64 Winchester Road. So we're organizing the Shoe for the Cure, which is an uh, annual hockey fundraiser for cancer. This is our 10th event, and this year is going to be March 24th and March 25th. We have Travis Roy coming Friday night, and we're asking for permission to put some sandwich board signs out so people know that Travis Roy will be in Arlington on Friday, March 24th. And then come down additional publicity. into the microphone. Sorry. Just some additional publicity for the event this year because it is our 10th anniversary. All right. Definitely. Um, and we'll have cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? They will have cupcakes. Um, uh, <laughs> in terms of the sandwich board, we do have a policy. I believe it's through the town manager's office. They're, they're approved through the. Okay. So after when, once we approve yep. this tonight, which I anticipate we will, you'll continue the process on with that. And I can't believe it's been 10 years. And congratulations on getting Mr. Roy and as well as all the volunteers that are working on this event for the 10th year. I really do appreciate Thank the two of you with others spearheading this. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bless you. Uh, is, is there anyone else here for a consent agenda? If not, with those remarks and um, considerations amended to the vote by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go to agenda item 12. Request common victor license, Classic Cafe, 1313 Mass Ave. Fatos Kari. Hi, if you could just say your name and establishment. Yeah, my name is Daniela Canina, and my husband, Fatos Kari. Hi, yeah. Fatos. Hi. Nice. We are very honored to be here to introduce ourselves as new owner of Classic Cafe. As many of you know that this place, breakfast and lunch, has been running for more than 13 years in Arlington area. We are very excited to, you know, to come to this point to be a new owner of Classic Cafe. Um, we have been, my husband has been working more than six years as a chef there. And, uh, you know, I think he has a good reputation in, you know, uh, for our customers. Uh, we'd like to make some changes in the future, um, next year, this year or next year. Uh, new design for the restaurant to make a, you know, a new atmosphere <laughs> where people can enjoy the meal and have a good time with their families. Uh, we have been talking with the landlord. She's trying to change the whole facade of the restaurant, which is very good news for us. Uh, we'd like to stick on some items of the menu because people like it, you know, Irish, mostly Irish uh, dishes. But he likes to put some new items in the future, Italian dishes maybe. We know that mostly are Irish people in Arlington, but maybe they like some Italian foods. <laughs> um, I keep asking actually customers if they like something to be improved in our place and they are very welcome, you know, we'd like to make them happy 
and so the business can run as it was before, you know, with a good reputation and even better in the future. So, Mr. Greeley. Yes. Uh, before I move approval, subject to all conditions as set forth, do you have any samples of the food with you this evening? <laughs> well, all right, I still move approval. I've been there many times. <laughs> move approval. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Second. Dunn. Um, Mr. Dunn. Hi, you can find me sitting on one of your stools on many Saturdays, so I look forward to seeing you more. Okay. All right. <laughs> And uh, congratulations, I ha have not yet met the chef who's been feeding me pretty consistently. Um, and I also- oh, Sicilian. Yes, yes. Yeah. Certain places where you say, okay, let's meet and talk about that. And, um, and, I, and I, I, one thing, we'd like to uh, put next year delivery. It's not yet there, but we'd like to make it easier for people <coughs> that they cannot come in special days so we can deliver the food in their house. And I don't know, you don't have to if the chef wants to say anything, but I look forward to you sort of experimenting and introducing sort of new cu cuisine. Um, my daughter-in-law is from Kathmandu, Nepal, uh, so for the past seven or eight years, I have yet to make that ginger-based sauce right yet. <laughs> um, but I've certainly learned a few new dishes that, um, as a Sicilian and also oh, yeah. Irish <laughs> descent, I never thought I would touch. So um, I really look forward to that. And I think you'll find Arlington... Um, which does have its base roots, also has a very diverse community, and uh, I think you'll be very well received in whatever I you encourage do. him to cook at home as well, okay. so he can cook for me at home. <laughs> Excellent. All right, thank you so okay. much. Um, uh, on a, did you want to say anything or no? He delivered everything to me. So. Okay, on a motion by Mr. <laughs> Smart Man right there. <laughs> on a motion by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank we you. look thank forward you. to it. Good luck. <laughs> uh, our next agenda item uh, under traffic rules and orders first we have for approval from our Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development a revision of charter plus proposed visitor sensor center programming and banner um, I know I've spoken to Ms. Ozulski I'll call on you first just name and committee for the record <laughs> Angela Olszewski, and I chair the Arlington Tourism and Economic Development Committee, also known as ATED. So our first uh, item is to revise <coughs> our charter. So you were given two things. One, which is the original um, committee composition when um, you formed the committee under an old name. And there were 13 members at that time, um, many of whom were chosen as representatives from certain other committees in town. Over time, we found that that didn't really fit us anymore, so while we want the committee to remain at 13 members, we want you as the appointing authority and us as recommending to have um, greater opportunity to just make the committee diverse um, people who represent the historic and cultural aspects, the business community, you know, residents who are willing to volunteer and help out. Um, so we revised that. Um, you were also given that document where we would have staggered terms um, and, and follow along that structure. So, I know you uh, I Mr. Carroll. I move approval of the charter. Moved, appear, uh, moved approval by Mr. Carroll on the revision of charter, seconded by Second. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you very much, and thank, thank you, Angela. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, having served, before I pass the baton to Mr. Dunn and Mr. Greeley, having served for many years as liaison to ATED, I, I was involved with the drafting of, of um, this, this charter, and I think there, there was an issue that, that, that was arising where um, the original charter actually very strictly specified representation from all different boards and committees who all have very busy um, uh, lists of activities themselves. It's the same issue we ran into with Vision 2020 with the Standing Committee. So I think this does give more flexibility um, and allows, you know, over time there have been some vacancies um, on ATED which, which it would be helpful to, to, um, to fill. So I think this will give a lot more flexibility to, to doing that. Okay, and a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn to approve the revision of charter. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Um, and if anybody needs to speak on the, any other agenda item, raise your hand. But I believe the next one is the proposed visitor center. Is that Ms. Alzuski or? Yeah, I'm going to do both of those. 
Yes. Okay. Um, so this is we we want to propose some programming at the visitor center for um, this season, and it's called Diversity Weekends. And so the idea behind this is to celebrate the culture in Arlington. And so we thought both as um, an activity to draw people, but that would be a good tie-in with the business community, is to see if we could get some restaurants in town, especially those um, that serve various ethnic foods, to um, come and either give samples or sell something at the Uncle Sam Plaza at the Visitor Center. But then also in exchange for using the, the land for free, they need to get their own food permits and all of that, but that they would sponsor um, a cultural activity. So that could be in conjunction, we would approve it, but it could be anything from maybe dancers or music or a children's activity. Um, and so this would, once again, celebrate the culture, but also draw people to the Uncle Sam Plaza. And in conjunction with that, um, we've also had an offer to sponsor a banner, which I know you were given um, a, a photo of um, in preparation for the meeting. Um, and that would say Arlington for all, and, and it also has a hashtag on it. And that would be hung between the poles, um, at the, the flag poles at the um, Uncle Sam Plaza, only during the events. So it would go up and come back down again. It would be constructed properly so that it could be out in the elements and the wind and um, hang and then be taken down. Thank you. Mr. Byrne? Um, thank you very much. Have you been in touch with any restaurants who have expressed interest in this so far? We have, we have one, we think, so far. Um, Ted? Have you had any restaurants express interest? Have we got any restaurants? Yeah, we don't have any. Yes, yes. no. Uh, on the uh, cusp. Uh, They're on the cusp. We're getting there. No, yeah, they're working, like working on it. We also wanted to get formal, although we've discussed it. I know, I think um, Ted's talked about it with Adam. We, we've, you know, discussed it at meetings when we've had our selectmen representatives there, but we also wanted to get formal approval before we move forward. And then I think that, you know, if this is approved, just make sure that the restaurants are ready to go through the whole permitting process to yeah. make that smoothly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion? Mr. So moved. Byrne. Moved by Mr. Byrne, seconded by... Second. Mr. Greeley, any further questions or comments? If uh, yes, uh, come up to the microphone, please. Name and address for the record. Brooks Harrelson, 27 Ashland. Um, I just want, I'm part of the diversity task group, and they brought this to the diversity task group uh, several times, and it was discussed and approved at the diversity task group. Thank you. Another volunteer committee. <laughs> um, uh, any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Grilly. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zulski, and thank you, Mr. Peluso. Appreciate all your efforts, and Mr. Harrelson and others. Next, we have for approval, Transportation Advisory Committee, TAC, mm -hmm. recommendations on speed limit changes. I believe we have our working group lead, Jeff Maxtudis, here. Mm -hmm. Name and position for the record, please. Jeff Max Tudis, Arlington Transportation Advisory Committee. Members of the board, thank you. Um, so recently the state uh, enacted new regulation that allows communities to change the statutory speed limit for town-owned roadways from 30 miles an hour, which it is now, to 25 miles an hour. Uh, statutory uh, speed limits affect roadways that don't have any regulation or posted speed limits on them. Um, the only change would be to actually in, um, install signs at the town <coughs> border saying that the, the new town speed limit is 25 miles an hour. Um, so the TAC unanimously um, approved this recommendation to recommend that the Board of Selectmen adopt a recommendation to the statutory speed limit from 30 to 25 miles an hour on all town-owned roadways within thickly settled or business district and this would have to be uh, have to notify Mass DOT if this is enacted. Okay, is there a motion? Move approval. Moved by Mr. Kuro. Yep. Seconded by Second. Mr. Mr. Byrne. Mr. Byrne, and then Mr. Greeley. This is actually um, not so much on the speed limit, which I, I do support and thank TAC as always for their work, but. I saw earlier in the consent agenda that you're moving to an associate member from a full-time member. So I just want to uh, thank you very much for all the work you've done over the past few years. I know um, you really helped hold uh, 
you know, give us advice that I think helped to move the town forward, and we're deeply grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you. I'll still be involved. Good. Good. I'm trying to cut Good. down on the meetings. <laughs> Mr. Grilly. Uh, just want to be clear uh, from Adam that the request is that this be effective May 1st, uh, right? May, may I? Thank you. Yeah, yes, based on the need to create the signs, post the signs, and for us to launch a public information campaign so that people both locally in Arlington and around Arlington know this change is happening, we're suggesting a May 1st effective date. I'll, I'll amend my motion accordingly. Okay. Mr. Dunn? So I just want to be clear. So there's a list in this uh, in the packet that ties a bunch of town, uh, excuse me, a bunch of roads in town mm -hmm. that are of different speed limits. And those aren't changed because those are set by the the other authorities that it lists, That's right? right. The, the, those won't change, nor nor will the state uh, roadways under state jurisdiction will not change. Okay. So for instance, that means like uh, the Route Two frontage road. There are parts of it that are 40 miles an hour, and you know there part there are parts of uh, Route 60, you know Pleasant Street that's 35 miles an hour and stuff like that. All of those we're not touching. It's going to be this is most this is like unsigned roads that are under our control as opposed to other people correct thank you yeah. um, mr. Chapdelaine did you have anything you wanted to add okay and I, I just want to say for everyone out there this has sort of been a long-standing issue when I first got involved in the late 90s I was so excited that the then senator sponsored and filed a bill to allow Arlington to reduce its speeds limit and I <coughs> thought it was a done deal uh, but it wasn't until the recent municipal acts there have been several different avenues of relief. And w what we've done here tonight is um, we've already accepted in town meetings discussed and adopted in terms of being able to, similar to the city of, of Boston and others, uh, lower the speed limit in the jurisdictions that we control. But what we're doing and continuing to do right now and we're getting near the end is just not going willy-nilly, out, uh, outlining a process we have Many, many experts, Mr. Mactus and others in our town manager's office that are working through this so that we sort of roll this out in an effective and um, staggered way. And I'm sure at future meetings we'll have future discussions in terms of final steps that we need to take and any uh, analysis benefit uh, study that's done. Um, but I, I do want to thank the Transportation Advisory Committee with my colleagues <coughs> who we send so many things to that um, if we had to pay for it, I kind of shudder to think <laughs> how much this additional cost would be. But again, the many different residents we have in Arlington that volunteer for all our different committees and commissions. So I really thank you. And thank, once again, thanks, TAC, on our behalf. You're very, well, very welcome. And we know we'll see you again soon on a motion by and amended by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any, uh, Mr. Kiro? Yeah, I just want to say just quickly, my, uh, as coincidence would have it, my oldest daughter started her driver's ed classes this week, God help me. <laughs> <laughs> her and she came, she came home and I said, you know what they just taught you about the 30 mile an hour limit? Forget about it. We're about to change it. <laughs> um, it. That, that's a little lighthearted, but I mean, we, we may want to make sure that there is a little bit of outreach to the local driving schools. They have a lot of Arlington High School and Arlington Catholic kids who are signed up through the high school for, uh, they had over 40 just this week, and just make sure they're aware that we're about to change this. It's just a thought. <laughs> and could I beg your indulgence, Mr. Carroll, that I appoint you to follow up Absolutely. on that with uh, <laughs> the town manager and uh, the superintendent schools and anyone else whom you deem fit and Absolutely. when appropriate report Absolutely. back to us all? I don't mean to pass the buck, yeah. but. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. all those opposed, unanimous vote. Um, what I'm going to do thank is I try much. to dispense, and thank you, Mr. Max. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Dispense as much of the business as we could and maintain the Board of Selectmen agenda, but recognizing that, you know, quite a few of you are here for warrant article hearings, uh, unless, and I have discussed this with my colleagues and um, gotten their initial approval, but um, I want to do it officially, that agenda items 15, 16, and 17, I believe those are really what I would call in-house agenda items that the board and the town manager office and department heads um, that I'll put those on the table for now so we can get into the warrant article hearings. Everybody is welcome to stay to the very end and, and when we get back to those, you're welcome to stay. I just know that a lot of you are here and, and giving up your time and, and good thoughts uh, for the warrant article hearing, so I'd like to get to that. I'd also sort of, uh, what I wanna do is just outline a very brief process, call on each of my colleagues for any initial comments but then get to the comments from pros, cons, or 
just people who have comments or questions that they'd like to put on the table that we can answer. If we can't answer tonight with a quick, concise, truthful answer, we will be keeping track of the questions and the Board of Selectmen's office along with the town manager's office will compile all those questions, put, put them in some form, um, get, get the correct answer or answers to those questions, and at the next Selectman's meeting, we'll announce, you know, the results of that and the proper formats in which we'll be distributing um, the answers to those questions. I do want to say that we may not go that late, but uh, if we're still in the business at, at around 11 o'clock, we'll have to adjourn, and if we don't get to any other Warren articles, um, I apologize to those here for that. I'll, I'll have to reschedule them to another meeting. Because of the uh, what I anticipate, the amount of speakers who may want to speak, um, we'll do as we've done in Selectman's meetings before. Uh, first of all, respectful remarks, as we, we have always done, uh, three-minute limit. Um, it, we're not going to get into any sort of debate or anything. Feel free to ask questions. If you don't get your answer tonight, it's because it's not a simple yes, no, but we will get the answers to those questions. And uh, before I call on the vice chair, Mr. Dunn, just to sort of outline the process, uh, at our last meeting at the end of January, I had um, put forth um, and proposed to my colleagues with their approval that the Board of Selectmen insert this Warren article as a resolution as a re result of what I and others um, have been hearing from a great many constituents, citizens, and um, others here in Arlington um, concerning Arlington as a community. And I just want to say that for myself personally, I'm just trying to do a good thing for good people I'm, I'm trying to do a good thing for all good people. I'm not trying to create any laws that allows bad people here in Arlington to um, be allowed to do unlawful acts. Um, I'm For myself personally, and I know I've heard from my colleagues in various forums, it's basically just embracing and making a statement uh, pretty much what we're already doing, uh, our police chief at our January meeting has already said, in practice, we're already doing what we're requesting and put for, putting forth for, for town meeting for uh, the sanctuary town status. I believe the State House today took a vote to call it the Safer Communities Act, but we, ha we are bound by what we put in the warrant. We can't change any wording. We can certainly add comments. But I really want to stress that this is just for Arlington, for our great community, for our, all of our good people. And please, when you know you come up, if you hear something, my colleagues have had to put up, up with me since 1999, and sometimes I say things, and I'm sure they'd rather give me the raspberry or give me a little hiss or something, but they don't. Um, uh, and, and I do appreciate that. And I, I say that in light, but I also say that you know, maybe initially when I first got on. So I would just ask you all, as you have done in the past, too. Uh, recognize that and we'll all just act accordingly. I do have a list. I'm going to keep track of the list. I do have, uh, once we get to the speakers, I'm going to ask you to line up um, behind the microphone, although we are co-sponsoring uh, with the Human Rights Commission a Warren article as well as they had a public information hearing yesterday. And then I do want to call on the town moderator and then we'll just get to everybody and I'll make sure as you say your name, I'll check off if you're on the list. If you're not on the list, feel free to get up. But first I'd like to turn over to, <coughs> excuse me, the Vice Chair, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mrs. Mahan. I have, I have two points, uh, two things I want to say. First, just a little bit, uh, for many people, this is your first town meeting hear, uh, hearing. And uh, the way the process works is, as uh, Mrs. Mahan said, we've got a warrant article. Uh, we've got a warrant. The warrant lists everything that's going to be discussed at town meeting. And then for uh, many of the articles, uh, the Board of Selectmen gets to choose what the first main motion is on that article. And so tonight's hearing is about, the, about what the uh, selectmen should recommend to town meeting. So either, uh, it, I can't imagine <coughs> we'll actually take a final vote tonight. We'll take, uh, we may take some vote tonight about direction, but the actual final language that we recommend to town meeting will be voted at a future meeting. And then when it comes to town meeting, town meeting will start with the words that we put in front of them. 
Town meeting, however, can make any amendments. They can remove it. They can change it. They can, town meeting is the ones who actually make the final decision. So our hearing tonight is about uh, what the first motion is going to be. It's about the first draft. And so I just wanted to give a little bit of that context. The second thing I want to say, and I'm going to read from notes, you'll have to forgive me, is that I wanted to talk for a minute about the tone of this debate and what it means for the town going forward. Uh, I've had dozens of conversations with residents about this resolution, and there's a wide range of opinion about whether we should move forward with this resolution or not, and even resolution supporters differ on the details of what should be in this, uh, the language. Tonight we're going to hear a lot of people talk, and we aren't going to agree with everyone. And what I encourage you all to remember is that we're neighbors. We are all neighbors here tonight. We will be neighbors when we wake up tomorrow morning. We will be neighbors going forward in the months and years ahead. I need you all to remember that while you're sitting in your seat and when you're at the microphone. We're going to have disagreements tonight, and that's okay. We're going to have passion, and that's okay too. But while we're having this debate, we must remain, retain our civility. We are neighbors. We don't boo, we don't hiss, and we let people have their say, even when we strongly disagree. We need to remember that after this night, whatever we do or don't do, we all need to move forward tomorrow. Passion is good, but please don't let it overwhelm your civility. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Kiro. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and, and uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, I, I just want to say thank everyone who has come out tonight. Obviously, there is a lot of passion around, around this issue. Um, a lot of people came here yesterday as well. Um, we had over 100 people in this hall yesterday as well for a question and answer session um, on the warrant article. I want to particularly thank um, the town manager, the town council, um, and uh, Captain Curran of the police department who came out uh, on Sunday to, to help um, you know, address some of the, the um, uh, questions that have arisen around, around this, which uh, I'm sure we'll get into with, with some of our uh, debate uh, as well, as well as the Human Rights Commission, which uh, well, organize it and had some representatives of the community who are, uh, you know, directly uh, feel direct impact by uh, whatever decision uh, we make here this evening. And lastly, um, also Mr. Thielman, he's a member of our school committee, but by day he works for one of the largest refugee resettlement um, agencies uh, in New England, um, and he also uh, lent his his time <coughs> as well. Um, so I think yesterday was a time for questions and answers. You know, quite back, a lot of back and forth at the uh, information session. Uh, this evening is just to hear the public testimony from uh, the community, pro, con, or, or in between. <laughs> um, and uh, I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all for your passion and being here with us this evening. Um, the only thing I would like to say is, uh, Madam Chair, is can we have our town council at some point? I believe there's a lot of misunderstanding um, about what, what this means to be a sanctuary city. Uh, were you going to call on him? Uh, at, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Thank okay. you for that suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Byrne? Yeah, no. Um, again, thank every. I am very grateful that everyone is here tonight, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. I, I know that in my several years on this board, I've never seen a turnout like this, and, and that speaks... Um, quite a bit to, to the seriousness that we're um, addressing this topic and this discussion, and, and it is something that I'm looking forward to. And uh, again, thank you all. Okay, so I have three pre-designated speakers before I, I'm going to ask everyone to uh, line up on the microphone. As of right now, 72 of you have signed up. Um, I would just not instruct, but if you hear your point has been made one, two, three times, um, you're welcome to make it a fourth or fifth or sixth time, um, but just in the business of the Board of Selectmen Warren article hearings, as many, uh, you know, there are other article hearings um, behind this item and uh, the remaining four. If we don't get to any of them, then that's what happens. Um, but I just would uh, make your remarks, um, and if they've already been made, please come up and, and just say that and, um, you know, maybe add a little bit more to that. But sometimes if you hear the same point seven, eight times over, uh, 
someone who may actually have a different point that this board needs to consider and approve or consider and, and not approve, um, we might not get to it tonight. So um, with that, first, um, as, at the recommendation of Mr. Gurley, thank you, Mr. Gurley. I hadn't thought of that if I could call on our town council. And for people who are here tonight, first time ever board of selectmen meeting, even though we're meeting where town meeting does. We have our uh, town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine. We have our town council, attorney Douglas Heim. And then we have our, from the board of selectmen's office, we have to take a later vote on that, um, Mrs. Mary Ann Sullivan, and then the rest of us, you can see from our name tags uh, who we are. So attorney Heim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good evening, folks. I'm gonna try not to go through everything that I've already articulated in a written memo to the board, which is available to everybody. But I just want to highlight a, a little bit about the posture and scope of the resolution we're actually talking about tonight and some select legal issues that relate to it. The scope of the resolution, and it's important to highlight that it's a resolution. We're not a city, so we don't have the ability to pass the types of ordinances that some of our neighbors like Boston and Cambridge have. Uh, the resolution is oriented towards encouraging and celebrating existing Arlington Police Department policies about how they uh, interact with all residents, what information they gather, and what information they voluntarily share or don't share with the federal government. The purpose, as I understand it from the excellent work of the Arlington Human Rights Commission, members of this board, the town manager, and the Arlington Police Department of the resolution is to reflect a certain value with respect to how we treat um, potential undocumented immigrants as well as ethnic and religious minorities in Arlington, but also to engender trust within all facets of our communities so that victims, witnesses, and persons in need of aid feel free to work with town personnel without fear of deportation or other immigration and customs enforcement related actions. There are a lot of pieces of the conversation that um, I think are important, but again, I wanna note that the posture of this is relative to that interaction between Arlington Police Department, what information it gathers, and what information it shares. It's not with respect to every executive order that the president has issued with respect to, immigration, to immigrants and refugees. Um, for example, it doesn't contemplate whether or not we should be allowing more or less in terms of refugees from other countries. It's really oriented again around how the Arlington Police Department and certain other town departments and agencies do their jobs, what type of information we collect, and what type of information we disseminate. There are three major uh, categories of actions that sanctuary communities generally contemplate. And it's maybe valuable to note here that there is no legal definition of a sanctuary town or city or a trust act town or city. Uh, the term trust act is borrowed in part from what I believe is a common set of uh, ordinances that have been passed in places like Boston that are very, very similar to what we're contemplating as resolution. But um, in terms of the types of things that they contemplate, they contemplate one, gathering information about someone's immigration status or citizenship um, as an ordinary course of uh, a police interaction. Uh, two, joining with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement in either developing some sort of registry of undocumented immigrants, uh, religious or ethnic minorities, or some other vulnerable population, or engaging in some sort of joint operation might, that might be referred to as a roundup, where APD is joining in ICE to identify and take into custody uh, persons who are undocumented uh, residents in the United States. Um, and three, um, certain other aspects of information sharing that might happen when uh, a stop or an arrest is made. Um, again, at present, Arlington Police Department's voluntary uh, internal policies do not, engage, do not basically do any of those things. We don't conduct joint operations with ICE. We don't gather information about um, residents' citizenship status as an ordinary course of uh, discharging law enforcement duties. And we generally don't proactively share information with ICE. I don't want to speak out of turn for the police department or, or go over points in more detail than folks need. But again, these are 
our, our APD's practices, and this resolution is consistent with those existing practices. I know that a lot of people are gonna have concerns about what this means for the town, and again, without trying to steal anybody's thunder or foreclose debate, um, with respect to risks of liability for the town, those risks are real, but they're quite low. They're low in two regards. They're low because it's unlikely that the resolution being contemplated by town meeting will result in some sort of uh, determination by um, the president uh, or the Trump administration that we're in violation of the executive orders at issue. And they're low in the sense that, generally speaking, uh, federal money is tied to specific federal programming. So that if we don't cooperate with the federal government on something that they say that we should be, they shouldn't be cutting funds for something unrelated to that. In other words, community development block grant funds, school funds, um, at least ordinarily within the realm of constitutional norms that have existed to date. Um, <laughs> should not be vulnerable um, uh, just because we're not cooperating with Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. And a final word on that, uh, I hope consistent with what the Chair and the Vice Chair have said. Some of these issues um, are going to appeal to certain values that might be described as liberal or conservative, Democratic or Republican. But I do want to note within that specific realm of funding issues, these are really issues of federalism. And they have been discussed both in the context of uh, democratic, liberal policies, as well as conservative or Republican policies. Uh, much of the groundwork for the legal landscape was laid uh, in terms of Affordable Care Act cases and gun rights cases from a different administration in a different time. So I just want folks to understand that, uh, again, there are risks, but those risks are relatively modest. And unless anybody from the board has any further specific questions or comments they'd like me to address, I will... Um, be quiet now and let the folks who want to speak um, share their thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Okay, um, what I'm going to do in an effort to get to every speaker, um, if you want to do what we do in the labor union, member 2222, maybe just do one clap um, because I'm trying to add 72 speakers. You don't all have to take three minutes each, but <coughs> Um, so if you really need to clap, let's just do it once, and then we can just keep moving. Um, I'd like to, uh, before we get to a representative from the Human Rights Commission who is co-sponsoring this Warren article with the Board of Selectmen, call on our town moderator. If you could just identify yourself for the record, sir. Good evening, John Leone, town moderator. Um, as you are aware, resolutions at town meeting do not carry the benefit of a bylaw and are effectively unenforceable votes. As has been the practice for the past several years, the debates on both Articles 59 and 60 I'm going to limit to 10 minutes per side. The proponents and opponents will each be provided a total of 10 minutes to present their best arguments, then we will conduct our vote. This should not be interpreted as limiting debate. Instead, the time limit is to preserve town meeting members' time to conducting the a time and focus to conducting the actual business of town meeting our budgets, bylaws, and zoning bylaws. I encourage both sides to organize in advance and prepare the most effective arguments and presentations, and I encourage this board to continue to hold additional public meetings so that these issues can be aired out by the townspeople. And, to provide an, and that you also provide an avenue for both sides to organize so that they can prepare their best meetings, their best arguments, and be concise at town meeting. This is so that town meeting can conduct its business without having hours long presentations, as you know we like to do. So any questions? Thank you. I just wanted to let everybody know that in advance so that they're not surprised at town meeting when I go ahead and make this announcement again. Thank you for the time. <laughs> Thank you. And, and what Mr. Leone has outlined is our future process of town meeting. We stopped meeting the last Monday in April. Um, only town meeting members can actually be sitting where you all are now. So if you want to come down to the meeting, you're more than welcome to attend. You can't be on the floor uh, of town meeting. You can sit up uh, in the balcony. If you want to speak, you can contact any town meeting member. Um, all the members of the Board of Selectmen are town meeting members, so you can contact from your precinct. Um, 
and you can be introduced onto the floor, but um, the town moderator has outlined the process that when we get to that Warren article at town meeting sometime in May, uh, the 10 minutes each side, so, um, and if there's a third side, but I, it's either yay or nay. So, uh, <laughs> so with that, um, I'd like to first, um, our co-sponsor is the Human Rights Commission to Article 59, if I could call on Mel Goldsipe. Just name, address, and or commission for the record. <laughs> uh, Mel Goldsipe, uh, I'm in Precinct 20 in the Heights, and I am the Arlington Human Rights Commission co-chair. Um, first of all, thank you for voting unanimously to co-sponsor this Warren article with the Human Rights Commission. I wanna remind everybody that Arlington's bylaw states, we value the diversity of our population, our town's mix of ethnic, religious, and cultural backgrounds, as well as economic and personal circumstances enriches us all. We will be known for the warm welcome and respect we extend to all. And I hope your vote today will reaffirm this pledge. At yesterday's info session, Captain Curran said that when there's real trust in a community, it's impossible to separate the police from the people. Many places across the country, there's a chasm between the police forces and those they swear to protect and serve. And we must continue to prevent that from happening here. This Trust Act and the Massachusetts State Communities Act, which is co-sponsored by Senator Donnelly and Representatives Garbally and Rogers, affirm that we need to choose solidarity over division. The Trust Act says everyone should be able to feel safe, fully participating in town life. It says that we support sound community policing practices, that we won't conduct data collection activities that violate people's religious freedom, and that we won't detain people without a criminal warrant because it's wrong and it would leave us open to Fourth Amendment lawsuits. People should feel safe seeking medical care or assisting the police, whether they're from a family that helped build Arlington or if they came to this country and this town more recently, bringing with them new businesses, new ideas, and new energy. No one should live in fear just because of where they were born. Immigrants have tenacity, ingenuity, and most of all, hope that the hard work that they uh, exhibit can build a future for their families here, just like generations of immigrants before them. This spirit is essential to Arlington. At the last town meeting, we added gender identity to our non-discrimination bylaw. Arlington was one of the towns and cities to show state lawmakers that momentum was building in support of the state equal access bill. A few months after hours passed, um, the vote succeeded in the state and Governor Baker signed it into law. But without towns like ours, the bill wouldn't have even made it to a vote. Likewise, new Sanctuary and Trust Act towns make passing the Massachusetts State Communities Act more likely. So let's make Arlington a leader for positive change again this year. Let's reject fear and vote for trust. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next uh, I would ask people to um, start to line up at the microphone and give your name and address for the record. You have up to three minutes. Thank you. Elizabeth Heichler, 32 Coolidge Road. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Uh, one second, please. Um, if you want to have conversations, please step outside because it's really hard to disseminate the background talk and the chatter. And I'm going to restart your time. So definitely have the conversations, but take them out to the hallways. If you could start again, I yes. apologize. Elizabeth Heichler, 32 Coolidge Road. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the board. I appreciate the opportunity to tell you why I support the sanctuary or trust community resolution. It draws a clear line between the roles of federal immigration enforcement agency and our local law enforcement and supports our community policing approach. Our community is safer when everyone knows they can trust the police and they're not afraid to report a crime or come forward with in information that can help the police simply because because of their immigration status. I think it's important to clear up the misconceptions. This resolution does not facilitate or encourage disregard for the law. Following the policy also protects our town from potential liability for violating the constitutional rights of someone who is held for no reason other than a request from ICE. There are numerous cases across the US where people are successfully suing local police agencies when their rights were violated while they were held on detainers. 
We're fortunate to be served by a highly professional police department here in Arlington. This resolution confirms our support for their focus on our urgent local policing priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, if you could just say your name and address for the record, please. Irving Kirsch, 144 Medford Street. My mother was, came to this country as an undocumented immigrant, and I'm very thankful that the, her being welcomed here allowed me to exist. Um, outside, before this meeting, I saw a young man who I was very pleased to see taking a role in political uh, activities, and he had a sign that said, uh, we are a nation of law. Why should we obey some laws and not others? Well, I don't see anything in the resolution that advocates disobeying any law at all, so it's really not pertinent to that, but I think it deserves an answer. Uh, there are, have been in this country, and others, laws and states which deserved to be disobeyed. Examples would be laws barring non-white children from going to certain schools, laws barring white and non-white individuals from getting married, laws forbidding the teaching of Darwin's theory of evolution. These and other laws have been changed, and they've been changed by individuals disobeying them and bringing them to court. So sometimes laws can be disobeyed. One very last thing, and that is the spirit that I see in our Board of Selectmen, that I see in many of the people outside and in this room, and that I think is fundamental. The first few of these words I'm sure you will all recognize, maybe not some of the latter ones, they're short, but there's what are, what are inscribed on the Statue of Liberty that immigrants see, or used to see when they came by boat years ago into this country. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Thank you. Okay, uh, next, name and address for the record, stranger. <laughs> Hard act to follow. Brooks Harrelson, uh, 27 Ashland Street. Um, first, I, Madam Chairman, members of the board, I want to thank you and applaud the vote you took at your last meeting. Um, as I read all of the media around this issue in Arlington, uh, it comes down to three issues for me. One is whether or not we would be ignoring criminality. I think that's been dispensed with. The second is loss of funding, and uh, our town council has ably spoken to that, and I think that it is perhaps even less a risk than he mentions. Uh, and the third one is whether or not this would make us less safe a community, which I don't see has been addressed yet, but there is a recent study I want to refer to out of the University of California at San Diego by Professor Wong that shows that sanctuary towns makes a significantly safer community. Out of over 2,000 communities he surveyed, over 600 of which were uh, sanctuary cities, in the small communities, 35 fewer criminal incidents per 10,000 residents in the small communities, 65 per 10,000 residents fewer uh, criminal, criminal events in the larger communities. Uh, these are reported in uh, the Washington Post uh, in the last couple of days. So I believe that there is uh, adequate evidence that the sanctuary town um, designations have in fact created safer communities principally for the reason of increased trust and reporting. Um, it's, these are also actions that are supported by the major city chiefs of police and the International Association of the Chiefs of Police that says that local police should not be involved in immigration activities because it makes their communities safer when they are not. Thank you. David Halloran, 114 Pleasant Street. Um, thank you for your service and thank you for a very well-run meeting. Um, now is the time to do the right thing. Now is an especially important time. Um, and I believe that uh, this warrant will make Arlington a safer place where citizens can live in an atmosphere of acceptance and neighborly neighborliness, not of fear. Thank you. My name is Lynette Martin, 18 Eustis Street. 
I'd like to thank members of the board for voting to bring this warrant forward. I'm here to disagree with one of my fellow Arlington residents who was quoted in the Globe recently. She stated, as a mother of two ch young children, I am extremely concerned about the message this decision would be sending. We do not get to pick the laws we want to obey. As a mother of two young children myself, I believe what makes America great is our freedom to challenge laws that do not serve the greater society. On the contrary, I think the message we send to our children by challenging harsh deportation laws is, is an important one. I want my children to learn to stand up and support the marginalized, to recognize their own privilege, and to be active in fighting for new laws when current standards prove biased or unfair. There are no good paths to citizenship for individuals defined as unskilled laborers. The immigrants that make sure our produce shelves are full at the grocery stores, the immigrants that cook and serve the food at the restaurants we like to frequent, currently have no good paths to citizenship. Until new laws are created to address the needs of these immigrants, to address this clear need in our economy, we must continue to resist. What makes Arlington great is our ability to recognize this injustice, to organize, and to find the strength to stand up to a federal administration that is running on policies of fear and bullying. As I teach my children that sometimes conscience requires breaking an unjust law, I would like to remind opponents that in this case, we are lucky in that no law breaking is required for us to stand up for what's right. There is nothing in the resolution that would prevent immigration and customs enforcement from enforcing federal laws. We will not be standing in their way or stopping them from doing their work. We are instead advocating for our, our, town's resor for our own town's resources and personnel and refusing to do their job for them. The federal government cannot force our police officers into putting aside their local work to do another agency's work instead. In closing, what makes Arlington great is the outrage that these new immigration policies, that this xenophobic rhetoric has evoked in our community. What makes Arlington great is our eagerness to stand beside all our neighbors, regardless of status, and say, we have your back. Thank you. Thank you. Fred McKenna, 6 Gray Street. I'm a World War II veteran served from 1942 to 46. I mention that only because it's... Thank you for your service, sir. What's that? On behalf of the town, thank you for your service. <laughs> I mention that only because it's pertinent to my statement. I was having coffee with a friend up here in a restaurant on Mass Avenue a couple of weeks ago, and a gentleman passed me and he saw my sign, which carries a World War II pen, and he thanked me for the service. Then he stopped and turned around and said, would you vote? Would you, uh, under the certain cir circumstances, would you re-enlist again? And I think for the first time in my life, I hesitated. I said, this is not the country that I signed up for way back when I was 17 years old. In the recent election, we saw a major candidate say, make the statement, long-held religious beliefs shall have to be changed. And basically that the government should have the guts to enforce that. One of the things that when I went in was that we were a country of freedoms, we were a country of laws, and nobody was above the laws. I remember when the Roe vs. Wade was first passed, people mentioned that uh, this was, you were starting a slippery slope once you devalue the value of life. I think that has come. The, these multiple mass killings that have gone on in our country for the last few years support that statement. We don't value life anymore. I'm afraid that with this, uh, sanctuary program, we're seeing the same slippery slope. We know certain cities known for that type of stuff have been were the first to set this up. Now we're seeing it get down to the smaller towns and the smaller countries, and the smaller counties, I'm sorry. Uh, Friday in Connecticut, they had to issue an amber alert. Gentlemen, I use the word advisedly, Someone killed his wife and took his six-year-old daughters and was running away with her. 
He was, an, he was an illegal immigrant who had been deported once before. Fortunately, they caught him up with him. The child was taken. This is a reoccurring story. We know the one up in San Francisco that got so much publicity. A gentleman had been deported several times, always came back and took advantage of the uh, sanctuary cities of San Francisco and so forth, and ended up killing, horribly killing a woman. Thank, thank Again. you, sir. I'll, I'll give you an extra 20, 30 seconds. You're a little over three minutes, but if you want to make your final remarks, sir. So I'm asking, what messages are we sending to our children? If the governments can say we're not going to obey the law, if anyone can start saying we're, we're going to not obey our laws. We were a country of freedoms and we were a country of laws and we should keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. I'm Sia Panis from 28 Chandler Street and I want to quote an important figure from literature, Albus Dumbledore. <laughs> Both quotes are words he said to Harry Potter in the book, books about the epic struggle between our beloved heroes and Lord Voldemort. The first one is, it is our choices that show what we truly are, <coughs> far more than our abilities. And the second, dark times lie ahead of us, and there will be a time when we must choose between what is easy and what is right. Tonight, here in Arlington, we have a responsibility as a community to stand for what is right. I can't imagine we would wish to be a community that turned people over to be deported or imprisoned. We know the history of the Nazi Holocaust, what happened to my people, and I think one of our deepest, most sacred honor duties is to stand in the way of anything that reinvigorates a Gestapo. Right here and right now, we need to stand for what is morally right and choose to be a sanctuary town. It is better to relinquish money if need be than destroy the essence of our humanity. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Christine French, Precinct 1375 Winchester Road. I just want to voice my opposition to the sanctuary status. Um, as a lifelong resident of Arlington, I believe that our declaration of a sanctuary status would be detrimental to a town that's already overtaxed and financially stressed. However low you think this risk is, there is a risk that this action would potentially place us in conflict with federal law, putting Arlington at a risk of losing a portion of if not all of the approximately $5 million it receives in annual federal funds. Our school department faces more than $800,000 in deficit. We have an overcrowded middle school. We have a high school that's in desperate need of renovations. My kids are in modular schools up at the Stratton. They're going to be in modular schools probably at the Audison and probably again at the high school. Our roads are in tough shape. We need federal funds for a lot of stuff. They shouldn't be affected isn't good enough for me. That doesn't mean that they won't be affected, that they shouldn't be affected. I agree that they shouldn't be affected, but we cannot afford to take this risk. The town of Arlington is in enough trouble. We can't afford to risk any federal funding. We don't have the commercial or industrial or institutional tax base that can withstand a potential reduction in federal money. There is no guarantee that we will, will not lose any federal funds. It's naive to assume that this risk is as low as you say it is. Clearly, we are a very diverse community. Arlington has always been and will continue to be an inclusive community. Why do we need to break federal law and risk federal funds in order to label ourselves a sanctuary city when, in fact, we already police the town as such? For me, this is not a political issue. It's a legal issue, and more importantly, a financial issue. 
The idea of helping people and being an inclusive community and supporting immigrants is really very noble, but not when it comes at the expense of breaking federal law, and I beg you, please do not break federal law in my name. I have two questions. What is the plan for offsetting the loss of federal funds if it happens? And two, is this going to be a ballot question on a local election so that residents can vote on it? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, please. Hi, my name is David Chesner Kirsch. I live at 8 Orchard Terrace. Um, I think it's precinct 7. If you get closer to the microphone. Sorry, I, I'm David Chesner Kirsch. I live at 8 Orchard Terrace. Um, I'm here to speak in support of the resolution. I th uh, thank the board um, and Madam Chairman for, for the work preparing this compassionate resolution. And I thank the Chief of Police and, and the Arlington Police Department for their ongoing policies that are in line with this resolution. Um, I just ask the board and everyone here to um, consider the circumstances that many would have to find themselves in to be willing to leave behind everything they know, a community that speaks their language, um, uh, way, ways that they, they know of getting their, their, um, their food, um, to come to a new place and risk breaking another country's law um, when, when that tenuous existence is the safer choice for them. Imagine, imagine how dire the circumstances that they left behind were. Um, and I would say that any law that, that um, prevents somebody from leaving those circumstances is an unjust law. And we should not ask the Arlington police to squander resources or squander community trust on enforcing a federal vendetta from billionaire politicians who, who want to go after these vulnerable people who have not broken Arlington laws, who have not broken Massachusetts laws. Um, so for, for these reasons, I, I uh, again commend the, the committee. I, I hope the town meeting will, will vote similarly. Um, and I, I'll just conclude in, in saying that I hope that our children will look back on 2017 with the words, um, First, they came for the immigrants, and we said, hell no. <laughs> OK, next. Um, my name is Anna Van Someren, and um, I'm at 78 Gloucester Street. Um, and I'm speaking in support of the Trust Act. Um, I just wanted to say, it's important to remember that we weren't born into these lives that we lead in Arlington and in the first world because we deserve it or because there is something better or special about us. Any one of us could have been born into or could find ourselves in an insecure or violent situation. From our position of relative wealth and comfort, we should show respect, kindness, and hospitality to everyone. As has been discussed, the Trust Act affirms the Arlington Police Department's existing philosophy and policies. So some might say there's no reason for the Trust Act. I disagree. I support it because President Trump has created a culture of hate and fear, and this sends a message of love. I attended yesterday's information session and was moved to tears several times hearing from Arlington residents, longtime Arlington residents, who came to this country escaping war and violence. I'm so proud that the Arlington Police Department and the Board of Selectmen support the Trust Act. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Deborah Goldsmith, 21 Devereaux Street. I am a clinician in town and I want to speak from that perspective, I have an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old in my practice. My old, own kid is bigger than that. Um, both of whom are frightened, not for themselves, they're citizens, their parents are citizens. They're frightened for their classmates. They're terrified because they have diverse companions, some of whom are particularly are Latino, and they're terrified because those other children are terrified, if not for themselves, for their parents, for their uncles, for their grandparents. I look forward to our being able to pass not only this resolution, but to have in every school and hopefully every doctor's office and the library and everywhere else 
documents that can reassure our children and their parents that they are as safe as they can possibly be in this town. And I do appreciate very much what you're doing, and the session yesterday was very helpful, and particularly hearing some of the details from our community police about how they will even take someone into protective custody just because someone encounters a policeman even in an untoward situation does not mean that they're suddenly marked in this town as criminals who have to leave. We are a town of generosity and caring and that's what we provide in our churches, in our schools, in our homes, in our synagogues, our mosques for our children. Please, we need to make it substantial. We need to make it real. We need to be able to point to a sign on the wall that says, remember, in this town you are safe. Thank you for what you're doing. Hi, my name is Jordan Weinstein, uh, 23 Lennon Road in Arlington, Precinct 21. Um, we seem to be in, a, in a, an era that has uh, rejected science and rejected data, and uh, where it seems to be fine and perfectly good to make decisions based on fear and conjecture. And I understand many of the criticisms that some of our, our own residents have raised. I've spoken to many uh, in my neighborhood. The, the fear of losing money, millions of dollars in finances and having to perhaps raise taxes. But that the data has been presented, uh, that it's a low risk and that the money isn't even likely to be targeted because it's not connected to homeland security issues or policing issues. Um, the other issue that's been raised is one of fear for public safety. And we've already heard from, or at least yesterday, we heard from the police uh, department and representatives that in fact, this bill which, or this resolution which only supports and kind of codifies what the police are doing anyway, would simply encourage people who may be undocumented to report crime, to intervene in a criminal act, to be able to go to uh, police. So I just ask those that are opposed to it to take a look at the data and the evidence and to question in their own hearts whether their objections based on finance or their objections based on public safety are not really simply objections that are based in some other kind of bias. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Hyde, 251 Gray Street, Precinct 14. Uh, I'm speaking in support of the resolution and I thank the um, selectmen for putting it forward. It's unreasonable to expect municipal police departments to carry out the business of a federal immigration agency, particularly when that agency is directed to detain people who have not committed a crime. That's not an appropriate function for a community-oriented police department, and it is liable to erode trust. Declaring ourselves a sanctuary community will build trust. It sends a message of trust to our police department, indicating that we appreciate and support current practices with regard to immigration, it also sends a message to immigrants who may be fearful, especially but not only those who are undocumented, that they can trust law enforcement officers in Arlington and can safely appeal for help and protection, report crime, or step <coughs> forward as witnesses like any citizen. I believe this designation will make the community stronger. Thank you. Thank you. Pascal Ruccellet, 114 Pleasant Street. Um, I simply want to thank... Okay. Nice and close to the microphone like Sorry. this. Sorry. Should I repeat my name? Yes, please. Pascal Ruccellet, 114 Pleasant Street. I'm simply here to thank you from the bottom of my heart um, to do what you're doing, uh, su supporting the Trust Act, and just want to thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming out. Adam Magnio, 19 Melrose Street. Uh, hello, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. 
Um, thankfully, the majority of this speech that I wrote out I don't think is um, especially new, so I'm going to skip a lot of it, and I'm really actually glad to be able to do that. Uh, <laughs> um, there is one point I'd like to respond to that I heard, and I saw it in a letter in the paper before, that we should not make this a moral issue, that it was merely or completely an economic issue, and I think that misses a big point that all of politics is inherently moral. It's how we legislate what our values are, how much, they, how much we value those values, and what we do when certain values contradict. Some values say we might lose, theoretically, if it's unlikely, but we might use some education funding, for example. How do we value that versus some, the right to f a freedom from fear of deportation or harassment, or, or even for legal immigrants and native-born citizens' fear from suspicion of being something. I mean, I'm, I'm an American citizen. I was born in Connecticut, but, and you might guess that from looking at me. I have blue eyes and white skin, but that's not necessarily true. I could have very easily come overseas. I went to Tufts. What if I got a student visa and just overstayed my welcome? It's a very common thing to happen. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to say. I'd sacrifice anything for my children. It's laudable. I, I don't have any children. I would do it for my younger sister. <laughs> But I think it's, it's a little different to say, to look to somebody else, somebody who hasn't done anything wrong to you, and say, I'd sacrifice you for that same thing. It's, that's, it's an understandable, it's an understandable opinion to do that. But that is most certainly a moral question, not an economic one. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Dre. I'm at uh, 130 Jason Street. And I'd like to thank you for your co-sponsoring of this resolution. I speak to you not only as a citizen, but also as a 12-year volunteer with the Arlington Teosinte Sister City Project and seven years as its director. And in that capacity, I've, got, I've had the privilege to speak, to speak and to hear real life stories about what life is like in El Salvador and what are the reasons that people are coming here. The gang violence, the kidnappings, the murders makes education impossible, it makes work impossible, it makes daily life impossible. People are trapped in their houses and they have no choice but to leave. And if they can't leave as a family, they send their children. Can you imagine sending your 12-year-old, your 10-year-old away like that? You don't do that if you have a choice. That reminds me of a poem called Home uh, by Wars Warson Shire, and I recommend that you read the entire thing, but the first line, no one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Closer to home, I've had the privilege of being in our schools. The Arlington Teosinti Sister City Project has had curriculum in the public schools in second grade, fourth grade, and through middle school and the high school since 2009. And I have stood in front of dozens of classrooms, hundreds of students, and spoken to them about the value of this incredible relationship we have with our sister city and how proud we should be of that 29-year-old friendship. And it comes up, how on earth did Arlington become friends, get connected with, with Teosinte? And I'm able to talk about how 29 years ago, a group of Arlington citizens understood that our government was doing something immoral in our name in El Salvador, a small, insignificant country so far away. And instead of looking away and saying, well, that doesn't affect me, that's too hard. That's too risky. They, they stood up and they made a change. And they understood that they had a moral responsibility to stand up for someone whose voices were silenced or ignored. And with that action 29 years ago, they saved lives. They literally saved lives. And they have forever connected our towns. And I talked to our students about social justice. And I talked to them about the responsibility that they have with the privilege that they have to help others along. And I am so proud to say that a group of Arlingtonians, people just like them or their parents, 
saw something wrong and took a moral stand and changed lives forever, both there and here in Arlington. If you could just in the next 20 seconds. Yep. You're okay. At three and a half. I wonder what we'll say to them if we don't stand up at this moment. If we, in five years, in 10 years, will we say that we followed our moral compass even though it was hard, expensive, risky, or will we say that we were afraid? And in that fear, we let them take away their friends, their classmates, their neighbors, our workers, our residents, and sent them back to the mouth of the shark. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Eli Gerzon. I live at 76 Bartlett Avenue. And um, so my family first moved to Arlington in 1991. I was in first grade. Um, and uh, I come from a pretty large family, and we did not have very much money. Uh, and sometimes we relied on government-funded programs. Um, so by adopting a sanctuary city, there's a small chance we will lose that funding, that type of funding. Um, but even if there is a small chance, I refuse to choose between taking care of young people, poor people, the elderly, or immigrants. If they try to take away federal funding, we must fight it. We cannot fall for the threats and bullying of a racist, fascist President Trump. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, let's, let's let everyone have the three minutes. You just took about 24 seconds. <laughs> You can keep cheering. I like no, cheering. I, cheering's I, good. Actually, uh, I set the rules. I'd like you all me. to follow. You've been excuse good me, so far. Okay. Um, and my family knows something about fascists because my grandfather and my grandmother left the Netherlands after Hitler had taken it over. Um, and I think it's also important to remember that Anne Frank tried, another Dutch Jew, tried to come to the U.S., tried to come specifically to Boston, and was not able to come because of our immigration laws and because of fear. And we cannot fall for that same kind of fear. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Eric Gloss. I'm at uh, 279 Appleton. Um, like the gentleman before me, my family knows something about fascism. My dad fought in World War II. He was an immigrant and a vet. He came to this country, couldn't speak the language, didn't know his way around, had no family here. He assimilated into American society pretty quickly. As a result of that, um, he made me read the Constitution as a 12-year-old. Not a lot of fun for a little kid. <laughs> We're a nation of laws, and we are uh, a nation of rules. And we are, right now, uh, as I read uh, the, uh, the language, uh, the sanctuary city status doesn't change operationally anything that APD is doing. APD is doing essentially in compliance with what they're supposed to do in terms of coordinating with ICE. The language in, in, that I see here does not uh, affect that. Um, what it does is put us at risk for losing funding, which as other folks have pointed out, uh, is really essential to our schools and to uh, serving citizens that are here right now. Now, it's been also pointed out that that risk of loss is low. Okay, but it's a risk nonetheless. And another thing I don't see in here is any discussion about how we will replace it. So what does that mean? It means either raising taxes or curtailing services or both in the event that we lose the funding. Granted, all that takes time. Uh, the judicial system <coughs> works slowly, that sort of thing. In point of fact, we're not dealing with a rational actor in the current administration. That's been pointed out as well. So in the event that we lose funding, what we're talking about then is providing really an uncertain benefit for an unknown number of people at some unclear point in the future who aren't here legally with no operational impact or immediate benefit to the town. I get the humanitarian interest at work, but I think that for a broader number of people to support this, we need to see some discussion and specific plan for replacing the funding because if we think that Trump won't punitively try to take this away from us, we're kidding ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanna say I'm gonna call in the next speaker and then I'm just gonna take a quick five minute break. Um, so I'm just gonna ask everyone um, after this gentleman speaks, 
um, if you don't want to remain standing, sit, but we're going to do the honor system in terms of what the order is. Um, sir, the floor is yours. My name is John Bass. I live on Old Colony Road in Arlington. <coughs> Excuse me. I was born in Arlington, and my great-grandparents came here from Italy in the 19, 1890s. My wife came here in 1962. I met her in the military, where I served 26 years. I'm also a retired Arlington police officer. Thank you. Numbers are very easy to play with. As anybody that attended college, economics, you can play with uh, crime facts. And I'm afraid that we're going to have problems in this town if we just open up the gates. I just have seen so many changes, and I know it's, I'd like to have people think a little bit about the elderly in this town. And instead of doing for everybody else, let's take care of our own people first. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, and we'll take a very brief break, be back in the next five, ten minutes. Okay, is everyone ready? Okay, next speaker, name and address for the record, please. Can I have a minute? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Susan Bourne of 18 School Street, Precinct 14. Um, I, I'm, in, I'm very much in favor of this resolution. I think that it enhances Arlington residents' freedom from fear on multiple levels. We have an excellent police department and I totally applaud their community policing efforts and Everyone in town should feel as safe speaking to the police as I do. And I also think that this enhances people's safety in that it keeps abusers in domestic situations and it keeps other criminals from using people, victims or witnesses, immigration status against them as a weapon that if they go to the police, they'll find themselves thrown out. Um, and. Also, uh, I know that there's a very slim chance that we would lose any federal funding over this, but I think that that's a big part of our town's freedom from fear too, because if we obey unjust rules that are put forth by the president because there's a very slim chance that we could lose funding, then I don't know I don't know what sorts of things we'll wind up having to agree to over the next few months and the next four years. Uh, Lawrence and Chelsea have already mounted lawsuits against the executive order saying that funding can't be restricted that broadly. And I hope that I hope that they'll succeed because this is a terrible tactic. And uh, thank you, every thank you um, all for advancing this resolution. Um, thank you. Hi, my name is Dana Highland. I live at 63 Barnum Street. Um, I'm probably one of the many people that you received letters from. I was one of them. And I just I really appreciate what everyone's been saying tonight, like on both sides. I'm wondering. I, and a lot of what pe different people have said, I, I've already uh, shared in my letter. But one thing I'm wondering, because it, it kind of sounds like the decision's already been made by you all, and that it seems like it might already be made. But I'm just wondering if there's any kind of compromise where could we call it something a little different? Um, the word sanctuary is so, it's so charged right now. Um, and I'm just wondering if, you know, if we believe in this so much and we want to do this, that calling it something else that would take us away or out of the um, uh, risk of, of losing anything, um, I think that might be something to consider. Um, because, you know, I think both sides have valid uh, concerns. And I think it is important to remember that we're basically talking about criminal illegal aliens. We're not talking about regular um, immigrants. I should say illegal immigrants. Um, so 
if people have committed crimes, it's really important that those people, um, and they're illegal, that they be um, handled under the law. And if it's already happening by the police, it seems redundant. Um, so I just ask you to consider, is there any kind of a compromise, changing the name a little bit so that we're not in the line of fire? Um, because I think it is a concern uh, financially. And I guess it just, it's hard when there's this kind of dialogue and it, it, it's put in the place of like one side is the heartfelt and the people with the heart and then the other side are the people who you know don't have heart or they don't care. And I just, I don't think that's a valid argument I don't feel it's a fair conversation to have it in that way because I think people have hearts on both sides and people care about people here. And so, and I care about the community too and, and immigrants. So, um, thank you. Thank you. And I, I just want to say to that, um, I don't know if somebody can articulate it better for me than I can. Uh, this is, is in no way adopting, endorsing that any immigrant legal or illegal, is a allowed to um, commit criminal acts and not be prosecuted and not, um, I'm probably not going to say this appropriately. Is there someone just very briefly that could speak to that, Attorney Heim? Because I apologize if in my interpretation and relaying it to uh, members of the Arlington community, um, that is not what we're going to do and I believe when the police made their initial presentation, they cited that we did have a very dangerous criminal and that person was prosecuted. But Attorney Heim, if you could help me out here and say it more succinctly than I am. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I know there's a lot of folks waiting, so I'll be brief. Um, just to be clear, an ICE detainer does not necessarily indicate whether or not someone is a convicted felon, whether they've been charged with a specific criminal act, other than, and this is subject to a lot of debate, uh, entering or remaining in the country without some other permission. So uh, the ICE detainers don't necessarily tell us much about somebody um, that, for example, they have, that would be different, a warrant is a different matter. When we send information to national databases, what we're getting is um, hopefully any indication whether there's outstanding warrants, someone's been arrest in, arrested in some other state and charged with some other crime. Um, but the ICE detainer doesn't necessarily tell us anything about that. It's a civil request to hold somebody on the suspicion that they might be here in the country um, without permission. And, and the word illegal, um, you know, is, is, is difficult because it's used in a slightly different context. It's not, the, it's not evidence sufficient to establish criminal activity. Um, that has to still be litigated. So if that answers your question, Madam Chair. Um, no, definitely. And I just wanted to clarify that in the past four or five years, there was... Uh, individual who committed criminal activity and we did follow all proper procedures to make sure that that individual was prosecuted in every way possible. Um, so as I said from the beginning, this is just to protect good people in the town of Arlington. It's not to protect any bad people and allow them to break any criminal laws whether you regard them as violent or nonviolent. So I apologize if I didn't say that as succinctly as I could. Um, name, address, or position for the record. Good evening. My name is Laura Rotolo. I'm here tonight representing the American Civil Liberties Union of Massachusetts. We're at 211 Congress Street in Boston. Um, and I just want to very briefly commend the Arlington residents and the selectmen and the Human Rights Commission for taking up this very important resolution. Um, and I want to add to the really amazing statements that have been said tonight that um, as Arlington, you, you're not alone. Um, over 400 cities, towns, counties around the countries have passed similar policies. Um, none of them have lost their funding. In Massachusetts, we have um, eight cities now that have passed similar policies. Those are Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, Lawrence, Amherst, Northampton, Holyoke, and most recently, Newton. Um, and as uh, one Arlington resident already mentioned, the cities of Chelsea and Lawrence have already brought a uh, sort of preemptive lawsuit about the loss of funding because they really do receive a lot of funding that affects really the most vulnerable among them in that, those cities. So it's, it's a real issue for them. But I just want to reiterate that there is broad consensus among us in the legal community that denying that kind of funding uh, as retaliation for doing something that the town of Arlington and all these other cities are within their rights to do 
would be unconstitutional. It would be uh, illegal and unconstitutional coercion. And you will certainly be supported in any litigation, any fight that might come up, um, whether it be the ACLU or the Lawyers Committee or any other of, uh, of our groups within the legal community. We believe that that is unconstitutional and uh, the Trump administration will certainly have a fight on its hands. So thank you very much for your time and we just want to show our support to the town of Arlington for taking this on. Hi, I'm Jean Fitzmaurice, 231 Mass Ave, mm -hmm. East Arlington. Um, thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about the legal aspect, and I appreciate your information, um, Doug, Mr. Heim, as an attorney. From what I understand, um, under the recent Supreme Court ruling about five years ago, Arizona versus Napolitano, remember there was some laws that were passed in Arizona by Governor uh, Jan Brewer, and um, the Obama administration took it up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court held that the federal government has plenary power over immigration and enforcement. Now, it, maybe five years ago is a little bit, you know, memory-wise, but remember, um, Arizona as a border state, they were trying to say, hey, you know, we, you know, we have this uh, problem with people, criminals coming over the border and all these things, and so they passed a few laws. And some of those laws got struck down by the Supreme Court case. I believe it was 2011, Arizona versus Napolitano. So why it affects this here is if, if, um, if that's a state, you know, and that's precedent, if that's a state, Arlington is a town. And even if you saying that, as the person previously said, there's a few communities that are saying sanctuary, which there is no legal definition, as Mr. Heim said, there's no legal definition. All these different towns and places around the country, they're slightly different. But under the Constitution, the, the Congress makes laws about immigration and nationalization. naturalization. So we had an amnesty uh, that was done in 1986 under and Reagan signed it, and the Congress did that. So what I, what I urge is, I know everybody's emotions are raw, and I know that 60% of the voters in Massachusetts voted for Clinton, and probably 90% in Arlington. But what we need to, what, if, if, if we want to change immigration or enforcement, the ICE policies, what we need to do is we need to get on the phone with Catherine Clark. Why isn't she here? The Congress people. We need to, Senator Markey. We're Senator Warren. Why didn't she immediately say we're going to pass a DREAM Act? Even that easy step. We're going to amnesty all people who under the DACA provision. Why aren't you on the phone? Why isn't Charlie Baker, he was talking to Trump at the ball last night. Where is Charlie Baker? You guys have to be on the phone. So we can pass whatever, you know, resolution. You, you know what I'm saying? And you said that it's not gonna change the policy, but we're against the Constitution and against Supreme Court precedent if we pass this resolution saying it's a sense of our local government. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, it's James Glutler at 42 Grafton Street. Um, and uh, thank you very much for allowing me to address you tonight. Thank you to the other speakers. I think many things have been said tonight that I support, and, and I want to say my family and I, uh, we support um, what Arlington is trying to do here. And uh, we'd also like to celebrate the current policies of the Arlington Police Department in supporting strong communities by uh, allowing us to, to celebrate inclusiveness as well as welcoming everyone regardless of their, their situation. Um, because many things have been said, I think one of the things I'd like to focus on, kind of uh, stepping back to a previous comment on, on Arizona, we're not a country that asks people papers, please. And the opposite of supporting our, our, our current policy is to <coughs> start asking for papers, please. And for myself, I, I don't, I'm not concerned. I, I recognize the privilege that I have, 
And I'm, I'm not concerned for myself. I am concerned for my wife. And I'm concerned for my four-month-old son. And what this country will be like where we ask those that seek help from the police or, or seek help from others, what is your status is the first question they ask as opposed to how can we help you? Um, what do you need? Um, how can you help us? And, and I, I, as I mentioned, I'd like to support and, and applaud the, the work that's done here. Um, I recognize there are other voices and uh, there are other differences, but, uh, but we stand strongly in, in support with you. So thank you. Hi, uh, Stephen DePisa, 86 High Haith Road. Uh, I'd like to thank all our elected officials present as well as everyone else who came out to be part of this important decision. <clears throat> I moved to Arlington about four and a half years ago and in that time I like to think I've learned a good deal about the place. For instance, I know I can head out the front door of this building, pick a direction and start walking and before too long I'll run into some kind of tangible reminder, perhaps accompanied by a plaque, of those who in generations past defied then laws of the land to stand up for justice. The essence of this issue with which we find ourselves faced is whether we're going to put a price tag in federal dollars on our conscience as a community, whether we will stand up to fear and to resist the callous abuse of authority or else abide silently as accomplices to such. I would therefore urge in the strongest possible terms that we as a town united call President Trump's contemptible bluff, say no to his petty divisive and inhumane tactics by voting to adopt sanctuary status, Money and fear are fleeting. The decisions of community that define its character are, however, forever. Thank you all for your time and attention. Thank you. Jeff Halpern, 48 Edmund Road. Madam Chair, members of the board, I want to thank you for bringing forth this motion. Um, uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, first, that uh, this is uh, primarily a matter of public safety and public trust in the police uh, for all people, uh, whether they are witnesses, whether they are uh, victims, uh, uh, to, uh, to feel safe in, uh, in working with the police. And uh, I, I want to address that in particular to people who have uh, addressed concern about um, the elderly, and that, that we must consider the elderly um, in this town, which which has historically been a, been a great place uh, to be uh, t t aging gracefully, and uh, that we should remember uh, the care providers uh, who work in, uh, in 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 situations like uh, home health aides, and remember where those people come from, and uh, remember that uh, that we want those people to feel safe in in working with our police. Um, lastly, I would like to uh, to agree with um, the speaker, who uh, uh, resident, who uh, suggested that uh, e even though uh, the town warrant um, wording is fixed and there's no way to change it, it, it would be a wonderful thing if uh, this could become called something other than a sanctuary town. A uh, couple of reasons, um, uh, you know, w w when I read here that sanctuary town status does not mean that the services, housing, or other accommodations are offered to undocumented immigrants because of sanctuary designation. We've been here for, for several hours and heard and, and, and we've had an opportunity to read this document. Um, not everyone will do so. And uh, uh, so when in an age of sound bites, um, you know, if there's any way we could call this safety oriented policing or um, uh, something like that, that, that emphasizes that this is a hard headed and uh, uh, practical uh, approach uh, that, that I think uh, w would, uh, personally, I would advise. Uh, I want to thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you. I'm Beth Salzberg from 303 Gray Street, and I appreciate <coughs> our town police, I appreciate our government, I appreciate everyone who's here tonight. You all care a lot about this town. I support the resolution and I want to make three quick points. One is that this is not just symbolic, this is something that has a real impact right now. Something we don't see so much in Arlington but that is quite visible in neighboring communities that have a higher immigrant population is that people are terrified. Kids are staying home from school, parents are staying home from work, people are literally going into hiding. So. It takes a proactive, strong statement to try to counter that and make the point that 
people who live or work or pass through Arlington actually can turn to the police here <coughs> and feel safe. The second point that I want to make is that there is no legal route for a lot of people who are crossing the border between Mexico and the United States who actually should be protected under U.S. treaties because they are refugees. So for the last couple of years, the majority of people coming through Mexico have been from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, which are three of the most dangerous countries in the world that are not in a declared state of war. And many studies have shown that the majority of these folks meet the criteria as refugees, but they don't, they're not able to get a lawyer. There aren't enough lawyers. These folks have no money. Without a lawyer, they're 15 times more likely to be deported, and about 90% of them are. So you could easily argue that the US is actually not honoring our treaties by giving them a path to establish that they're refugees. The third thing I want to say is that scapegoating is incredibly dangerous. Right now, we have an administration that is telling us that our country is more dangerous because of immigrants, that is telling us that our economy is in bad shape and jobs are being taken because of immigrants. There is so much documentation that these two things are false. As one of the other speakers said, um, well, the sanctuary communities are safer, but even beyond that, the rate of crimes committed by immigrants, whether documented or not, is lower than that of US-born citizens. This is absolutely documented in many places. And also, economists have looked at what the impact of mass deportations would be, and it's devastating to our economy. Already, our economy is suffering. Tourism is suffering. Foreign exchange students are deciding not to come to the United States. This is bad for us. I grew up with the specter of the Holocaust. I think we all know what scapegoating can do when a government is saying, you're the good guys, these are the bad guys, just give me the power and I'll take care of it, I'll get rid of these bad guys for you. And I really do see that happening now, so I feel this is incredibly urgent. Thanks very much. Thank you. My name is Isabella J. my address is 130 Jason Street. And I'm very proud that Arlington is taking steps towards becoming a sanctuary town. Arlington needs to pass a resolution to become a sanctuary town to protect all of the students in Arlington public schools. My peers and friends need to feel safe and supported in Arlington, not threatened. I have recently begun to work with students from Central America in the high school. I go to a class during my free period to translate for them. At 16, they should be able to focus on school and learning, not, feel, not fear for their lives. The Trust Act will ensure that they feel welcome and supported here in Arlington. We all need to stand by refugees, immigrants, and people of all religions, races, and identities to uphold the values of Arlington. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Jennifer Litowski, 76 Oxford Street. I stand here as a, a resident of Arlington, a parent of a child at Arlington Schools, and a taxpayer, but not as a citizen. I entered the United States in 2001. I moved here from Canada. And over that time, I have made friends from all over the country. I've lived in fantastic communities. And I have trusted colleagues, again, from all over the country and all over the world. And it's only in the last few months that I have honestly felt a chill. I, to the point, a chill in expressing myself politically or speaking out in public, to the point that I was hesitant to even come up here and speak in Little Arlington to do this. And I can only imagine how much worse this is for people who don't have my advantages, because I'm hardly the person most at risk here. I'm, I'm from Canada. I'm white. I, d I don't speak with much of an accent. And... <laughs> And uh, I don't have an Arabic name, but I have colleagues who fall under all those categories, and I'll tell you they feel it. There's, I was really impressed to hear the fellow from uh, the Arlington Police Department at the info session yesterday describing the Arlington community policing policy. I think it's really admirable. I'm proud of what they do. I only started hearing about that and learning about it in the last few weeks. There is really a value in taking a public stand and making a public statement that this is what Arlington believes in and this is our policy, because you can't engender this trust and build this community if people don't actually know. 
And that's one of the reasons why using the actual terminology of a sanctuary community or a trust community matters because people know what it means and can recognize that this is something that Arlington does and that we know that this community that we've loved so much since moving here a couple of years ago, that this community stands up and welcomes or stands up for and welcomes people regardless of where they're from, their immigration status, what they look like and what they believe. Thank you very much. Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. Uh, thank you for hearing me. I'm here to speak in favor of this resolution. Two short points, one longer one. Uh, first, the argument uh, about safety has been made. Uh, I think the biggest risks to Arlington's public safety are cell phone distracted drivers and cyclists who think that Mass Ave is their place to ride the Grand Prix. When we take care of those problems, let's worry about people who are coming here for their own security. And w at that point, we'll worry about it. Uh, some people worry the town has changed. Yes, it has in many ways. But frankly, we've become a gated community and the gate around Arlington is high housing costs and high taxes. When we find something to do about that, then again, we can worry about a few people who are coming here for security and safety. I think the most important point, and I haven't heard it addressed too much, is a direct response to the people who say, what part of illegal don't you understand? And I think they do deserve a response. And I think the response is that when law and justice conflict, as they often do. Americans have a tendency to choose justice over law, and even in cases where the just, justice and law are in accord with each other, we tend to choose justice tempered with mercy. And I think that's what we're trying to do here. That's who we are as Americans. That's what defines us. And there is plenty of history of choosing that and also choosing to violate some laws, including federal law, in pursuit of what is right over what may be legal. And there's lots of history for that. Bostonians in 1850 resisted the Fugitive Slave Act and freed slaves who were captured and about to be deported back to the South. I went to Oberlin College where there are railroad tracks rising out of the ground at an angle, a symbol of the fact that Oberlin was a terminus point of the Underground Railroad. We're not actively aiding and abetting the smuggling of human beings here. We're just allowing them to live here. That's much less risky. If people could do that and it was the right thing then, this is certainly the right thing now. And we need, we, we just need to consider that. 10 seconds. I've all, thank you. Uh, I've, and again, as a matter of balancing federal and local government, we do not ask the federal government to police our streets. The, although we cooperate, the federal government should not be asking us to perform a federal immigration function. Thank you very much. My name is Jennifer Lachlan. I live at 20 Foster Street. Others tonight have spoken of a slippery slope. Helping the vulnerable is not a slippery slope. Protecting human rights is not a slippery slope. It is fascism that is the slippery slope. Many things have occurred nationally in the past five weeks that few people would have anticipated a short time ago. The fact that our police are already doing the things that this warrant covers is no guarantee that they will be able to continue doing so. We need written policies and resolutions that we can point to in saying that these are the values we hold and so that we can support our law enforcement officers in continuing to treat all people fairly in Arlington, even if our nation takes a different course. Thank you. And I just want to say before the next speaker starts, I think I actually see the end of the line where we can, um, the board will then uh, make a motion, or not make a motion, and uh, we will vote on this, 
And then please, everybody, you're welcome to stay. We do have several more, four, five, six Warren article hearings, final Warren article votes. And then we still have to get back to the business of the meeting that I took out of turn. So I'm gonna assume everyone who wants to speak is in that line and as Sinatra would say, now the end is near. <laughs> Name and address for the record, please. Um, Kelly Sullivan, 23 Belknap Street. And I just wanted to say that I stand 100% um, in support of making Arlington a sanctuary town. And I want to thank all of your work on this and the police department and all the work they've done in the past. I am so proud to be an Arlington resident. Um, I'm going to take a little turn on that though for a moment and I'm going to ask or just remind us all of one of the problems that's happening um, with the division in this country right now and that is that there is a large amount of people who um, feel who may be less educated than the major wonderful majority of Arlington citizens or may be less fortunate to have um, as much um, money and income and privilege and so as we do this, I can understand how some people might fear that we would lose some federal funding because of this issue. And so I'm just um, hoping or putting out the question that um, the rest of us, as we all speak, and unbelievably eloquent speakers tonight in support of this, and I'm so proud of all of you, but how can we also um, support our elderly and support our low income um, and other people who at the very, very small chance that, that uh, we would actually lose federal funding, how is it that we could commit to them, the rest of us, and, and say we stand by you and we as a town will, um, will help you in this issue? And again, uh, such a small chance with all the courts, with everything that's happening, but I thought it was a small chance that Trump would win, but <laughs> unfortunately he didn't. I'm sorry if that was out of line. Um, thank you very much for letting thank me you. speak. Hi, I'm Deb Bermudis, 19 Belknap Street in Arlington. Um, I've lived in the town for about 25 years. I work in the town, I work with children. We teach our kids, and I'm here in support of this, absolutely. Um, we teach our kids to be caring, confident, and conscientious people. And I think that we as adults need to start looking at the similarities we have with others as opposed to pointing out the differences all the time. So thank you for your help. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, my name is Otto Mejia from Two Pine Ridge Road in Arlington. Um, I am here just to thank you for considering nice and Arlington. close like this, sorry. I'm, I'm here just to thank you for um, considering Arlington to be a sanctuary city. Um, it is hard for immigrants to come and they don't come here because uh, they just decide one day. Uh, um, they come here for many reasons and then get into a place where everything is different it's hard not, not to consider that the other things like police and uh, stuff are there to get you. If that's where you came from and you think the police is going to be after you. And uh, the sense that going to them and to report something um, will be um, something that keep them from doing it. It will not be safe. Police will not have their uh, support. I am a uh, witness of that happening in other countries where uh, you uh, grow up and they tell you keep away from police, don't tell them anything, you see something, keep quiet. Because um, police work for the government and the government is corrupt. Something that you come to this country and think that this is paradise. <laughs> And unfortunately, um, people think that these people coming will take advantage of the country, uh, or services. If that's what they think, and they think that immigrants are rapists, rapists and uh, terrorists, well, they, be, they should be afraid of me. Um, simply, I wanna say that uh, we are lucky. Um, everybody here is lucky, because we don't choose where we are born. We don't choose color, sex, <coughs> forms. We, we are born. And if you were anywhere where you have no choice, you will leave that place and you will go and f 
find a better place. Every one of you will do it, given the circumstances. So you are just lucky. We, I'm very lucky. I married 25 years ago with a wonderful woman. I love my woman. She um, changed my life. But uh, many people have not been that lucky. And luck is everything. I just thank you for considering it. And um, that's all. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name's Kathy Peterson, and I live at 31 Chandler Street. I don't think I'm going to be able to be nearly as eloquent as everyone else here. Um, I just wanted to say that I 100% support this. I think that if um, Arlington does go ahead and become a sanctuary town, that in the future we're going to look back and we're going to be so proud of ourselves. We have an incredibly sinister government uh, presidency at, at this time. It's uh, been disturbing pretty much every single day since his inauguration. I was dreading what he might do, and since he's actually become president, it's um, a thousand times worse than I ever could have imagined, and I think a lot of Americans feel the same way. I think we could go further than this. Um, I absolutely think for all the reasons other people have been stating, we should, I urge you, um, to put this uh, before the town, and I hope that there's a vote for it. Um, I think that I calculated on my calculator what the taxes would cost if we had to raise taxes uh, with the population of 42,000 um, uh, in town. Taxes should be about 120 per head. I think we could afford that. Um, but going a step further, there's a town in California that I don't know if you read about this town, Richmond, um, it's a, or it's a city in California. And they recently, uh, the city council voted um, to uh, recommend uh, that impeachment hearings start against Trump. And, and they're hoping that there will be cities and towns across the country that will you know, put a vote out there and, and recommend um, that there be uh, a special impartial commission to investigate Trump um, for various reasons, his competence, um, the emoluments clause. Um, so I just wanted to put that idea out there. No one else has mentioned it. I think uh, we could go a little bit further. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Because we, we have to get to a vote at some point, folks. Um, so if you're not in line, we're gonna, you really need to let us get to a vote. And we do have other business. Other people are here for other Warren articles. And I guess what I would say is, um, if you can't get a sense of how we're gonna vote, and you, you need to convince us, or you get a sense of how we're gonna vote, and you wanna unconvince us, that's great. But we really, so if nobody else, the end of the line is with, I think it's number seven back there. Thank you. Name and address for the Hi, heart. I'm Pam DeBona from 53 River Street. I just have a quick, piece, a uh, new piece of the puzzle here um, that, you know, it's really not an abstract feel-good thing, even here in Arlington, to call ourselves a sanctuary town. Um, I am lucky enough to live over in the Thompson School District. I live just a couple blocks from the public housing, and my kids don't look like me. There are many of us in town who have kids who are internationally adopted, who are really also really feeling nervous about what's happening uh, currently in the country. My kids have had to be reassured several times that they are American citizens and that nothing can happen to them. Um, we're really lucky here in Arlington. My kids are friends with Officer Hogan and, and, his, and his dog. Um, and you know, what a cool thing that is, to be able to go up and do a high five with your police officer. Noah was Officer Hogan and Officer Hogan's baseball team. This is what we're trying to cultivate here, that everybody can have this opportunity in Arlington, that my kids' friends at the Thompson School who don't speak languages, 
who don't speak English at home, who practice different religions, who are here for many different reasons, can feel safe here. And so I'm here really to thank you all for putting this forward and uh, hearing all of us tonight. Thank you. Hello. I'm Elaine Shea, 9 Lincoln Street, and um, I'm delighted to be here. I've lived here all my life, which is a very long time. <laughs> And I've never been more proud to be an Allingtonian than I have with this whole sanctuary movement. And I'm so grateful to all of you for being part of that. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a woman who spoke at the library, and she was a Polish Jewish woman who, as a child, her family had been um, disrupted with the Nazis, and most of them had been killed. But she and her siblings were saved by upstanders. And I had never heard that term before, but it really resonated with me, and it does now. This is the time for us to be upstanders, and I believe in all of you and your willingness to do that. I've been thinking of my late husband tonight, who was one of the early members of the Human Rights Commission, and how pleased he would be to see all of this going on. And I thought to myself, what would Bill say? Mm -hmm. And he would say, take the high road. That's what he would say. So I hope you all take the high road and are upstanders in this matter. Thank you. Wendy Bell, Arlington Human Rights Commission. Uh, I just want to acknowledge the really real and palpable fear that people have expressed across the political spectrum about the loss of federal funding. And I want to say that it's a fear that I actually share, but not as a result of our becoming a trust fund, or a trust, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? If we could become a trust fund town, uh, not as a result of our becoming a trust act town. I think that Attorney Haim has done a very good job assessing the risk and has determined it to be real but quite low. My fear is rooted in my understanding of the governing philosophy of the current administration and their threats to dismantle the the education system and other programming that towns like ours rely on. And so I do think that there's a potential for the loss of funds, and I think that's something that we as a town need to respond to and prepare to resist. But I don't think it's part of the conversation that we're having tonight, and I hope that we can address it another town, another time, after we've done the work of, of being upstanders, as other speakers have said. So thank you very much for hosting this thank and you. for voting. Um. Well, I, 141 Raffle Street, uh, I've been in uh, the United States for um, 16 years, and I've been here in Arlington for 11 years, I think. Um, as a person with a foreign origin and with a strong accent, I actually am speaking here in objection to this motion. Uh, first of all, I think some people, some fellow residents, have alluded to uh, the possibility of losing federal funding. That's a real possibility. but. Equally importantly, I think um, uh, there's a uh, uh, question of principle here. Um, I think when I came to the United States, I came here because you know, this is a land of opportunity and also this is a land of laws. So we don't make you know, our, own, our, our own rules, we follow the rules. If we don't like the rules, we talk to our congressman, we change the rules. That's how it works. Um, so um, I, I think you know, uh, having if, if we pass this motion and uh, you know, decide to proclaim our town as a sanctuary town, it's a wonderful thing to make our town as uh, you know, diverse as possible, but uh, at the same time, we are taking the rule in our own hands, we're not following the, following the rules. Um, that's, uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Wendy Seltzer, 176 Pleasant Street. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Selectmen. Um, thank you to the uh, Human Rights Commission for bringing this motion forward. Um, and commendations to uh, the Arlington Police Department for uh, already uh, following the principles that uh, we're seeking to uh, enshrine in the Trust Act. I think there are three key reasons, uh, nonetheless, to uh, adopt a uh, Trust Act resolution, uh, to support our neighbors uh, in their freedom from fear, uh, all of our neighbors. 
uh, to influence state law and uh, federal law, sending the message that we as a town uh, believe strongly in inclusion, uh, and then affirming our common humanity. And I think we uh, need to be responsive to uh, the concerns that we've heard uh, in the room. Uh, I heard concerns that we uh, be uh, enforcing rules correctly uh, and concerns about the funding um, at issue. Um, on the question of, of rules, uh, we're not asking uh, sanctioning uh, breaking the law. We're asking to repudiate unjust law. Prior administrations uh, enforced immigration law against violent criminals and uh, those who had uh, broken laws beyond the uh, immigration laws. This administration appears dedicated to rounding out anyone whose only crime is being found in the wrong place. That's not the humanity uh, that we should uh, be a part of, and uh, it's not sanctioning uh, the uh, running uh, afoul of all laws uh, to uh, reject this one. Uh, and uh, in regards to the question of funding, I want to commit to working with uh, others in the town that if we were to, to run that small risk of, uh, of losing <coughs> federal funding, uh, that beyond this meeting, beyond this season of resolutions, beyond this administration, uh, that we are uh, a town that supports uh, all of our residents. Um, and I think our first step uh, is supporting this resolution. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Donna Moore, and I live at 15 Jason Street. And I would like to encourage the board, and, as well as the town meeting members when that time comes, to support this Trust Act resolution, making Arlington a sanctuary town. In my view, this act has both practical and symbolic implications that are all positive for the future of our community. In particular, it sends a strong message to the people who live here, work here, shop at local businesses, and attend local activities that this is an accepting and welcoming community where people can support and trust one another. And we find that in the current political climate, people's stress levels are really on the rise. Uh, just recently, the American Psychological Association conducted a poll finding that 57% of adult Americans consider the, the current political climate to be a significant source of stress. And this is a much higher percentage than in other recent years. One aspect of the current presidential administration that I fear is the bullying tactics that are often used. By declaring ourselves as a sanctuary town, we're affirming our support of the current police practices and that we do not want the police to be pressured into ad adopting practices such as detaining people and conducting a registry of, of people and things like that. <laughs> so this act is very proactive and the th thing that we can do as a community to bring us together and help reduce a climate of stress and fear. I feel that this act will benefit all people who are connected to Arlington to ease the political stress and fear, and to help us instead celebrate the community that we all share. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yang Meiji from 20 Haosong Ave. Can you get close to the mic? I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you the, uh, for the board to provide the opportunity of the hearing. And I do appreciate the culture of Arlington, because as an immigrant, I. Um, I do not see anybody here is not welcoming immigrants. Um, by reading the fact sheets, I noticed that the police in Arlington is already following the guidelines of San Cruz City. Um, so my question is, at, um, um, at this point, what is the urgency to make it the town, a San Cruz town right now? Because if the goal is to welcoming immigrants, we have already reached the goal. And we are just, um, just because the name of the San Francisco City, we are risking um, uh, losing millions of the federal funds, uh, which is going to be used to the education system and for the elderly housing and people really in needs. 
Um, I don't know how many of you know that the Minotomy Preschool that is located in the Arlington High School, the kids of the preschoolers, they have been drinking from a water fountain that has a lead level four times higher than required. And these are the vulnerable kids the, um, that they are the most vulnerable from lead poisoning just because the school system is so old. When I hear the news, my heart re really sank for those kids. So I urge the board to uh, take uh, very great courses to evaluate the pros and cons of the Sanctuary, being a Sanctuary city without urging to make a decision. And we should, I urge you guys to further research in detail and have all the residents in Arlington be aware of what are the pros and cons. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Timothy Lee uh, uh, from uh, 846 Mass Avenue, Arlington. And actually, I'm an uh, immigrant uh, to the U.S. Uh, and I actually want well, to thank you for the U.S. people are welcome me to uh, to this country and and actually, but I'm here to uh, object to this uh, uh, resolution because uh, so my uh, concern is first, I already welcome people, any people regarding the background, regarding the, the whether they're immigrant or not. So we don't need to just you know, to bear the name of the city or sanctuary to pass this uh, resolution, uh, sorry, to pass this resolution. And then second, my concern is, the f uh, I mean, to be a risk of losing the funding of education. Actually, I, I actually uh, I live uh, close to Arlington High School, but <coughs> I actually paid, uh, I know that Arlington High School is not, a, of course, it's, it's now it's, it's going up, it's pretty good, but it's not the best. And I want the Arlington High School to be the best, how? We need the money, we need the funding, more funding, of course, more better. If I want my kids, if one day, if he is uh, get education in the island high school, I want he to go to, the, to get the best education to go to Howard. Why we just, uh, just for the, the, to bear the name of the sanctuary city and lose the, my, my children to potential to get, uh, get involved in Howard. And this, uh, my second concern is, it's like, if we bear the name, it also <coughs> the same time, you could encourage, uh, encourage some people, probably encourage some uh, 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 illegal immigrant to come here. Hey, this is uh, uh, the city, that, the, the sanctuary city. Oh, I, I want to go here. Uh, people, get, I, I mean, of course, we work on any people, but we don't want to <coughs> work, like, like London people come here. We want the people like, like nice to each other, be generous to each other. And, uh, yeah, that's my concern. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn it to my colleagues. I wanna thank everybody, especially you all that have hung in there t till the end. <coughs> I have written down eight questions. I know that um, Mrs. Sullivan and uh, the town manager also have been keeping track, so um, in the interest of time, I won't go over them, but. I'll be shocked if between the three of us, we didn't get them all. And um, I, I just want to, before I turn this over to my colleagues, just make it clear that, um, and I accept the praise from the pros and the cons, the for and the against, the in favor, not in favor, uh, in terms of, well, we're already doing it, you know, why do we have to take this step? If we have one of the best little kept secrets in the town of Arlington, um, but nobody really knows about it unless they've been involved with this issue and came to a public meeting yesterday or um, God bless you, nothing better was on and you happened to catch the Board of Selectmen's meeting at the end of January. Um, Street to San Francisco on Channel 3 might do you better, but uh, I think it's very important and um, just from my own personal family circumstances um, and that they don't reside in Arlington, but 
I, I think this is how we make that statement and how we say to our community, this is what we're doing, and we want to let you know you're doing. This is what we're doing, and we want to let you know Diane Mahan and her husband know that they're still really proud that they're in a community that that cares and they can lay their head down at night. And we want to let those people, uh, my daughter-in-law and uh, her parents from Nepal, Kathmandu. She's a legal U.S. citizen, and my two grandsons also. But I can't tell you the trepidation. I don't want to you know, escalate it, but the true trepidation they have in, in terms of, you know, where they live and, um, and they're legal <coughs> U.S. citizens. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to, uh, I take the uh, positive remarks for the Arlington P Police Department, whether you were for or against this, because you all recognize that it's a compassionate force, but it's also a very lawful force. Uh, thank you to Captain Flynn and, and others who have, have been here tonight. But I think it's really important that we get this word out, that we don't, it's not just a few hundred or thousand or so people that know about it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to turn to my colleagues to see um, what they would like to do. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman, and all of you who are here tonight. Um, by my count, we had um, 47 speakers and probably another 40 that wish they could. Uh, 39, I, by my count, uh, spoke in favor. Uh, five, and I give them a lot of credit, brave souls uh, who spoke against it in a, in a very passionate room, and a couple I couldn't quite tell whether they were speaking for or against. Uh, for myself, I don't think there's any question, what is the right thing to do? And is it right uh, necessarily to hang over our heads that I withhold funds because I disagree with the moral stance that you take? Uh, and if that were to happen, we with the passion who are here tonight have to commit. We have to go out and fight, whether it be for an override or other, we will have to find a way to get those funds. We need to fight like heck that it doesn't happen but what's the right thing to do, in my opinion, is for Arlington to continue to be a sanctuary for all peoples. I move, we recommend favorable action. Second. Okay. Okay, on Article 59, we have a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Uh, any questions, comments? Mr. Byrne, oh, and then oh, Mr. Carroll. Sorry. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed the discussion tonight. I, I think I learned a lot. Um, I saw a sense of passion that I haven't seen in this room in, you know, a long time. Um, I think we learned tonight that everyone, regardless of how you feel about this issue, respects our police department and our other town employees. And, um, you know, I, I think it's important that um, we all know that they operate professionally and ensure that we all feel safe regardless of a community member's situation. Um, over the past few weeks, I, I have put quite a bit of thought into you know, the potential loss of these federal, fund, uh, these federal funds that keep coming up tonight. Um, and you know, where, we, where we stand right now, I'm confident that our CDBG funds and education funds you know, will not be at harm. Um, if we received, you know, quite a bit of Department of Homeland, Homeland Security funding, um, you know, maybe there would be a greater opportunity for those funds to, you know, not be given out to our community. But we don't receive any. And, you know, in, when I do think what's more important is, is what we heard tonight, and that's the community that we want to be. Um, so what we're doing is, um, in my mind, is we are you know, reaffirming the long-standing commitment that we have <coughs> to protecting everyone in town. We're providing a sense of safety to those who feel they need it. And we're making a statement about the type of community we are. Um, it, it's a community that I'm proud to serve. Uh, it's one that um, I've watched my family members serve for generations now. And it's one that I hope we continue to, um, you know, move in the right direction with. Um, and whether you've been here for two hours or two generations, you're going to be safe in Arlington. And that's something I'm proud to support. So thank you. Mr. Mr. Carroll. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to my colleagues and Mr. Greeley for the, for the motion. Um, <clears throat> you know, in uh, some of the correspondence that we've received, um, we, we have been admonished a bit, and, and it's been said that, uh, you know, you're sworn uh, to uphold the law. Um, I think the town council actually put it very succinctly, uh, summarized something that a number of you have said um, this evening, and that is that there is a difference between disobeying the law and simply neglecting to cooperate with the federal government. There is a difference there. And as elected officials, you know, we are also here, we're first and foremost, we're answerable to the voters, but we also have a responsibility to anyone who lives in, lives in Arlington, anyone who works in Arlington, anyone who worships here, anyone who owns a business, pays taxes, or simply visits our town, we have a responsibility to make sure that they are all served um, fairly, um, not only by our police, but by all of our, our, our uh, public officials in our interactions with them, that we do not, as someone said, we don't ask for, for papers as, as a condition. Um, I think about, you know, who is impacted by this, the statement, because this is really a statement that we're making in uh, passing this, and I, and I think about what I've seen on the board here, and we, we saw actually tonight, we saw some small business owners who came before us and, and uh, were, were granted a permit to follow their dream and, and uh, to serve the town of Arlington, something we sorely need. Uh, we, we hear a lot about empty storefronts, something we sorely <coughs> need. And, Something, I say this a lot, something I, I have to, I really love something that my colleague, Mr. Greeley, does so often with um, the, the applicants, no matter where they come from, comes up before us. He often says, thank you for choosing Arlington. Thank you for choosing Arlington. And for so, we know that for common victual licenses and such, such a huge percentage of that, we may as well be saying thank you for, for choosing America, too, and for investing in our community, investing in, um, in our country. And so I think, if we don't make this statement, I think in an alternative universe, we don't have a proactive and proud police department, which is their, 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 their motto. How, how false would that ring when we say welcome, you know, thank you for choosing Arlington, um, if we were then to say, oh, and by the way, you'll be periodically visited by the police and we'll be checking your employees and disrupting your customers. That's an alternative vision. That's an alternative vision. I think about my times on the school committee. I think at that time, and I see Mr. Hayner in the front here, you he might be able to confirm this. <clears throat> something like 50 or 60 languages are spoken in the homes of our, of our students. And we, some people spoke about kids, and I'm glad Pam mentioned um, kids who are international adoptions. I also know kids in Arlington who are international adoptions and are also <laughs> petrified and have been asking their parents, am I gonna be sent back? That, it's important to send a message to our kids, and we send a message as, as leaders in the community that that's not going to happen. We also, we know of that population. We, we have a vision in our minds of what an undocumented migrant is. We think about someone who's slipping the fence down at the Texan border, maybe fleeing across the desert and risking their lives. Of course, we turn on the TV now, we see people who are fleeing through the snows of North Dakota, fleeing us. It's not funny, I, I mean, I, I, it, it's ironic, but it's not funny. <coughs> but undocumented immigrants, they may be legal one day and they're illegal the next. Much of our population in East Arlington, for example, we know we have a lot of graduate students and those families come in for a number of years. And it may well be that they've finished their graduate study, their, their student visa maybe has lapsed while they're trying to get a, a work permit, an H-1B or something like, like that. We heard the situation where somebody comes in illegally, but they're actually seeking refugee status. They're in that kind of limbo place. We're not equipped here in Arlington, I think, to, to um, moderate that. So I just want to talk about just two, two more things. I'm sorry, I know it's been a long night, but um, I feel very passionate about this. I want to talk about the perceived threat and the action that's before us. I never in my life thought that I would be sitting in a body like this and be worried that my government would be uh, presenting me with a threat, playing off immigrant community against the poor, those who need housing, those who need special education services, because that's, that's what the funds, federal funding comes from. 
I never thought that we would, that we would uh, face that. Um, because this action is, is, it's really a declaration of war, not just, it's on our communities writ whole. And it's a, th it's a threat. I want to talk about the action, though, that we have before us and just reinforce uh, something. Now, um, a number of people mentioned Captain Curran. He was wonderful yesterday. And one thing that he, he did, he read from Sir Robert Peel's <coughs> Principles of Law Enforcement from 1829 that guide our community policing philosophy here in Arlington. <coughs> And the second principle of Sir Robert Peel was the ability of the police to perform their duties is dependent upon public approval of police existence, actions, behavior, and the ability of the police to secure and maintain public respect. The purest form of public approval is for our town meeting to be able to stand up and make a statement. To stand up and make a statement. This is a non-binding resolution before us and what we're facing is this threat, or we perceive a threat, for town meeting expressing its opinion. Expressing its opinion, that's all, in support of our police department. And by my reading of the Constitution, that doesn't fly. And I think that if we accede to that threat for voicing our public approval of our current practices, I have to wonder what the Monotomy Sons of Liberty, who are lying buried just a, a, a short ways away from here, how they would judge us. <coughs> so I, I enthusiastically support the resolution. And, and, uh... Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I am now going to call for a vote on this uh, motion made by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kiro. If you're not staying for the rest of the meeting, um, please leave safely and quickly and have your conversations out there just to be mindful and respectful of we still do have an awful lot more business and Warren articles and those people are waiting to have their turn. So um, any further discussion or questions, if not on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kiro for, Kiro for favorable action for Article 59. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and thanks for coming out. Thank you. I guess I'll take 60 seconds. And I'll yeah. out. Thank you so much. Can you see me? Can you see me? Thanks. You're an upstander, too. I love you. Okay, if, you, if everyone please could be respectful. We still have a lot more Warren articles and other business to get going. So if you could take your conversations outside, or you're welcome to stay and observe. I, and I, I apologize, but we still have, probably have another hour or two ahead of us. <laughs> and most of you probably don't. God bless you all. Madam Chair? Uh, Attorney Heim? I'm sorry, just, uh, just uh, as a reminder on our, our, for folks who are listening, what I'm going to do is try to take the comments that have been made by the selectmen uh, tonight and uh, marshal them into a uh, vote. Uh, we've had some draft resolutions uh, circulated, um, some competing resolutions. I just want to make sure that I'm assuming correctly that the board is authorizing me to go ahead and continue to work on those to put one in front of uh, all of you at the next votes and comments session. Yes, as a matter of fact, to that end, I'm going to pass back over at the end of the meeting, the eight questions that I wrote down that I got, as well as the list of people who signed in, I checked off that they did and I added names. Thank so you very much, Madam Chair. Can you just pass that down? Okay, we're now going to continue on with our Warren article hearings because, correct me if I'm incorrect, Mr. Chapdelaine, the um, other three items under traffic rules and orders are really just housekeeping everybody up in this table. We don't have any department head or anything waiting on any of those. Okay, we will now go to 
any uh, warrant article hearing for Article 15. Again, we had extensive conversations <coughs> on this in January. Um, the Human Rights Commission, along with the Town Manager's Office and the Board of Selectmen's Office, has sort of uh, been retooling what our possible uh, <coughs> final vote and comment could be and working with the Human Rights Commission and um, the town manager and the administrative staff at the Selectman's office, we do have that draft language that has been submitted to us. Um, if there's anyone here who would like to speak, I'm gonna do the same thing, come to the microphone, but we do have the results of, you know, we had the extensive hearing in January, we have the results from yesterday, we have the draft language, so, um, Please feel free to come up. Do we have it, um, maybe one person from the Human Rights Commission at least that could speak to this? Or two. We can have two. <laughs> Just again, name and address for them. Yeah. Hi, good evening. My name is Anna Watson. I live at 200 Spring Avenue. Um, and uh, I, I actually um, really excited to come after this exciting uh, past warrant because this is also a question of how do we how do we welcome each other? How do we um, how do we treat our neighbors? Um, so I'm a lesbian. I'm a mom, <coughs> and I've lived in Arlington for over 20 years. And I am here to support the establishment. I believe the language is the LGBTQIA+ plus plus. Rainbow Commission. And I know that's a lot of letters. And they stand for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or questioning, intersex, asexual. And the plus sign reminds us that there are a lot of other identities as well. And this alphabet soup, uh, it <coughs> really always indicates to me and reminds me, makes me think about how there are many, many different kinds of queer people and that we all deserve recognition, support, community, and opportunities to network and create culture. Um, so just a little bit about um, what I've seen living in Arlington as a queer person. Starting about 12 years ago, I began doing some queer community organizing um, from queer parent family potlucks when my kids were in grade school to helping form one of our area's first middle school gay straight alliances at the Otteson Middle School. And uh, currently I am um, president of an all volunteer grassroots organization, the Mystic LGBTQ plus Youth Support Network or Queer Mystic. And the more out and about I've been in town, the better understanding I have that the needs and interests and issues of queer people here are as varied as our alphabet soup lineup indicates and as a survey of queer adults by the Arlington Human Rights Commission has backed up. Um, coordinating with other organizations and agencies in town has shown me that citizens uh, in Arlington are truly open to creating resource and community for a vibrant part of the population. And that's why we have a queer book group at our local library, as well as events for queer elders at our Council on Aging. And the time has definitely come for town information and supports to be located in one accessible place and for a commission to be formed in order that the work that has been done by many volunteers and many colleagues, that that isn't lost and that it can continue to grow. So as president of Queer Mystic and as a queer citizen of Arlington, I support the Rainbow Commission. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bill Gardner. I live at 11 Monotomy Rocks Drive, and I'm here to support my colleague, uh, also a member of Queer Mystic. I had an opportunity to speak to you earlier, and I just want to re reiterate a couple of the points that I made to the larger audience. Um, first of all, Thank you for this amazing experience tonight. I really can't tell you how proud I am to be living in Arlington based on what I experienced here tonight. It was really powerful. And what you did as leaders really, really touched me. And I hope that you'll also have the same kind of energy and support for our LGBTQ neighbors. One of the things that's really important to me as an American is the incredible energy, millions of people across our country 
who are engaged in activism to support the LGBTQ community. And they have organized all in every, every state in the country and in hundreds of cities and in hundreds of universities forming organizations and structures. And I think that's what this discussion is about tonight, putting entities in place that can really help to form, create an interface between the LGBTQ community and the government and agencies and, and citizens groups that are part of it. And I think that's an incredibly powerful thing that's happening. And we can look to the many human relations committees that are forming and now the, the, the emergence of these new groups, and there's only like 10 or 12 of them that I can identify <coughs> around the country that are specifically focused on the LGBTQ, com LGBTQ community, I'm trying to get that out. And so providing that kind of focus and that connection is really important. And we have an opportunity here to create that here in our town and to be, in a certain sense, a national leader if we were to form it here. And I'm impressed that Austin, Texas and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania have just started that discussion in their own towns around doing that as well. So I think it's a great opportunity for us. I think it's a, a significant time for us to put a place together that can really create that interaction between the community and the government that we're a part of. Thank you very much for considering that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's, I promise I'll be much shorter this time. Um, I wanted to let you know that... Um, Just we, name and address. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, Mel Goldside, Human Rights Commission, Precinct 20. Um, I wanted to let you know that at the last Human Rights Commission meeting that we had, we had a community member come to us and say, I'm really concerned about this executive order rescinding support for transgender students. <coughs> are, are our students safe here? And I was so proud to be able to say, last year at town meeting, we made sure that our students are supported and safe in our schools and can be themselves when they arrive in the hallways. So um, thank you for that work from last year. But I think that that kind of concern and the fact that people don't know what we've already done um, shows the need for this kind of uh, commission to be established. So uh, we did vote unanimously at the last Human Rights Commission to support this Warren article. And I'm gonna skip everything else about this and just say that as a queer person myself, I also support this. So thank you. Thank you, Mel. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I, I would like to move approval I, on, on, on favor, move favorable action, or that we recommend favorable action to town meeting second. on this. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Mr. Dunn. Um, I will say that I had one um, thing that I mentioned to the uh, to town council earlier today was that the the potential draft la language that we includes here says that it's going to have a variable number of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says that um, people will serve until their successor is appointed. And those two things, I don't think, work together. And so <coughs> I think we should either, you know, recommend to the town council our choice, or we should ask him to come up, I think, with a more elegant solution. But I think that there's, the, the act, there's something there that I, I don't think is, we need to tweak before we uh, do vote our, our final language. And so I, I don't personally I have a say, preference. Does, does yeah. anyone have a preference? Why don't we just say what it's either one or the other and um, take the less ambiguous, which is what the first thing you said? Well, uh, we can either say that there's um, a variable number of people on the committee, and so and then we'll appoint to say three-year terms. And then when your three-year term is up, you're done, you're gone. And if we don't reappoint you, then there's just fewer people on the commission, which is something that we could do. Or we could say there will be five or people, or there will be nine people. And then if we fail to appoint somebody, the, or you know, somebody new, then the predecessor continues uh, in their way. Mr. Curo and then Mr. Byrne. Of those, I would I would tend to, to just go for a set number, mm -hmm. be it five, be it nine, um, because I, I think it's probably a management headache if you if you're trying to figure out now how many vacancies do we actually have when it's constantly expanding and shrinking. Yeah. Mr. Byrne, I, I agree with that, particularly because we're requiring a quorum for mm. any meetings to conduct business. I think that probably having a set number will make it easier for that sake. Okay, so uh, we'll vote favorable action with the language that we discussed in the latter with a set number of, do we know if it's five or nine? I think it's, it's oh, I forget. Let's go with nine. It says it has an upper limit of nine. <coughs> nine members is what's here. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not 
it's the never it's end. Yeah, no, let's get it right. <laughs> no, no, it's yeah. fine. What number? Give us a number. I really think nine is too high to start out with. I don't think we're going to find was, nine people right away. <laughs> I was thinking five or seven. Can I, we start with five? And that's why I, need, I think five, We can yes. just come back and ask for more people later. Okay. Does that uh, make sense? Well, we, like in two years, if the commission needs more people, we just amend it? Uh, the, because of the way we're putting this into a bylaw, uh -huh. changing the number will require another vote of town meeting. Okay. I do seven. seven? I do seven. Yeah. All right, let's do seven. I'm going to seven. <coughs> okay, so um, can we incorporate what we just said um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Grayley, with those amendments for final votes and comments? Is yes. that okay? Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, um, any further clarifications, questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. I'm sorry, I just realized I was using my voice when this <coughs> auditorium was packed, so I'm going to try to bring it down a few decibels. <laughs> Probably don't even need this anymore. Now go to Article 18, Bylaw Amendment Appraisals of Town Property Interests. Mr. Chapterlane. Oh, what's this list thing? All right, when we go back upstairs, we're going to go back the other way. Hmm. Um, is there anyone here who wants to speak to Warren Article 18? Uh, please come up to the microphone. I think there may be two or three of you, according to this list, but it's up to you all. Name and address for the record. Sure, Lisa Reynolds, One, uh, one Point Terrace. Uh, thank you for considering this article. Uh, the issue of valuation of town-owned real property interest came to uh, our attention when the town disposed of the um, Pleasant View and Spring easement, and it was Article 29 of 2016, and the release of that easement. And when we looked at how the easements um, were valued, we thought that the value should be determined according to commonly accepted real estate appraisal practices. Uh, we think the town would benefit from establishing the practice that is in accordance with the state um, best practices and laws um, detailed in Chapter 36B, Section 16 of state law. Um, so we ask that the board um, recommends the new guidelines so that town meeting is presented with a sound value from which to base their vote when disposing of town-owned property um, and real property interests. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Dunn, yeah. sorry. So, uh, do my, Ms. Ms. Reynolds, I'm sorry. So um, if I read correctly, you were the original signer and the sponsor of, that That's brought right. this forward. Okay, so yeah. can you tell me a little bit more, like what about the motivation? Like what is it that you, do you, do you perceive something that the town did wrong or do you perceive something that we might do wrong in the future? Can you tell me more about... Uh, so some of these, uh, and I ask, uh, honest, uh, it's a very honest question because some of these things that come forward, I say, oh, I know exactly what the problem is that they're trying to fix. In this case, it wasn't clear to me, and I'd love to hear it. Did, did you receive um, the write-up that we sent to I the believe board I did. on the, like, of uh, February yeah. 17th? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that outlines it somewhat. Yep. And, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's from you. It's, uh, yeah, but could, yep. could you just encapsulate it, especially for people sitting at home, when mm -hmm. they ask us this exact same question? We, we can't say, well, we'll give you this. You, like, you, mm -hmm. You're going to give us the best answer to that. Yeah, when the, um, the easement that the town was disposing of uh, was valued, we found that the procedures and the formula that they used to value that property was not in keeping with um, best practices of the real estate appraisal industry as well as uh, state guidelines. And so we would uh, recommend that we use uh, commonly accepted real estate appraisal practices in order to arrive at a fair value for the property. Okay. And my husband could have spoken a little bit more detail probably on it, but um, he, had to, he was not feeling well tonight and only made it <laughs> about halfway through this meeting. So, but thank you. Okay, stranger, name and address for the record. Uh, good evening. Uh, Michael Ruderman, uh, 9 Alton Street, Madam Chairman, members of the board, and fellow government policy fans. Um, this, uh, th this warrant article is... Uh, classic sort of good governance -ish, uh, article that would make the uh, typical good practices of, of our government uh, a little better. 
I can tell you from the last couple of years in town meeting that there was a, a bit of perplexed discussion when the questions of, of uh, selling real property have come before us the last two years. Uh, questions that I believe a, a, a typically uh, presented professional appraisal would have answered and hastened us to, to uh, the, the, the discussion of the actual matters at hand, not the questions that were uh, prevalent in the hall, which were along the lines of, uh, how did we get to this price? You know, is, is this is this a fair price? Is this, you know, is this objectively determined? You know, how did they come up with this? Should we even be selling it? Is it even real estate? I, I did hear that quite a bit in the question of, of, of an easement uh, for the town to uh, have the privilege of creating a road, which I, I assure you is, and you know, uh, real estate. Uh, but it would have settled a great many questions to have had an appraisal before us because not just the, the, uh, the number or the opinion of value that goes on page one uh, is found in appraisal, but all the pages that follow it list the appraiser's methods and the way that the appraiser came to the professional decision, including whatever special circumstances prevail, such as the property being uh, of distressed uh, condition or of limited utility to anyone except a neighboring property owner. These are all fairly typical conditions in the world of, of real estate appraisal. And they could have been the questions of, of uh, how do we come up with a fair price, the how, questions could have been dispensed with if we had had in our hands an, an objective uh, third-party appraisal to consider, then we would have been able to advance the discussion more rapidly to a question of whether, whether it was in the town's interest to, to make this sale or not. And that's why I'm a supporter of the article. Thank you. Um, Mr. Greeley? Um, can I ask you, Madam Chair, the uh, town manager's position here? Do you mind commenting yeah, on that? No, no problem. Is that all right? May, may I? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I think this, this article, um, if the board so choose, would be, would be fine to pursue. Um, I, I think it would give us a standardized procedure for handling these somewhat, uh, though they have happened in successive years, the, the past two years, I still think they'd actually be pretty unique situations that wouldn't occur um, very frequently. So providing a standardized procedure that, the, that all town officials could use, I think could be a helpful tool. Move we recommend favorable action. Move favorable action by Mr. Greeley, second, second. by Mr. Curo. Um, any further discussion or comments from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Mr. No, no, it's okay. I was, I was, I've been formulating this one. Um, I, I think it, as we draft whatever language, I think I'd like us to talk about whether or not we want um, to, leave, frankly, leave room for exceptions. And I think that we. Uh, I just want to make, I guess I would, uh, uh, the draft that I hope that we see doesn't have, um, there are weird property things that, you know, that, that ha like there are deed restrictions and there are things like that that end up being uh, very difficult. And so I have no, uh, seeking the opinion of people is one thing. I just want to make sure we don't bind ourselves to something that ends up being nonsensical in the future. Attorney Heim. Um, I've spoken with Ms. Reynolds about this a little bit, and I, I think that she's shown me some draft language that, um, would allow us to uh, proceed in a manner consistent with what folks are talking about. Not necessarily in terms of whether it would apply or not, but how the appraisal, how much, how binding the appraisal is on us. Okay. Is that, is that a fair characterization, Ms. Reynolds? Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, with that, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 aye, all those opposed, unanimous vote. We now come to Article 19, vote appointment of town treasurer. Thank you. Thank you. Name and address for the record. Thank you, Madam Chair, Chairwoman. Uh, Bill Hainer, uh, 19 Putnam Road. Uh, and I honestly believe the three minute rule was put in in anticipation of me coming up. Uh, <laughs> beat you to it. It took a long uh, meeting to do it. But. I, I, in looking at this article, uh, I can remember, I think it was about six years ago, a similar article, Article 53. Uh, appointing the treasurer, and at that time, the major argument was the fear of electing uh, a person not competent or capable of dealing with it. I think right now, uh, knowing uh, the way the ballot is going right now, we probably have one of the most capable uh, people going with this. So uh, 
in the manner of keeping it brief, I would ask the, uh, the board here to consider no action and establishing a study committee. Uh, I'm not opposed to the, the whole thing the way I was vehemently the last time, but I don't think it's necessary at this time. I think a study committee uh, to, to look at all aspects of it uh, might be beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Question. Byrne, uh, oh, um, Bill? Okay. <coughs> sure. How, how, uh, no, please. How would you want that study committee to differ from the last study that we did? Well, the, 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 the correct me if I'm wrong, but the major emphasis was the DOR report yep. at that time. It was dealing with Barnstable. Uh, I argued at that point, we are nothing like Barnstable. We did not have a corrupt official that they were dealing with at that time, uh, going back then. Uh, we're a totally different entity. Um, uh, I, I, I leave it to the board. I, I just don't think right now is the time to be looking at an appointed treasurer based on, I mean, if, if the board has another rationale for bringing it forward this time, other than the, the, the fear of an elected person coming up not capable, uh, mm -hmm. as I said before. Uh, I have uh, disagreed with Mr. Carmen on a lot of issues, but I, I have never disagreed with his qualification. I know he's standing right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> But at the same time, I, I mean, his qualifications, are, as far as I'm concerned, are impeccable and to the benefit of this town. So if, if there's another reason, I'd be happy to, not necessarily in this form, to hear the rationale uh, for going forward with an appointed. Uh, but that was the reason given at that time, and I haven't heard anything other than that. And, and if I could to that point before we hear from the gentleman behind you, um, just myself personally, um, when we started down this path, <coughs> eight years ago, eight, yep. nine years ago, that as I will say respectfully, the tale of two audits, after we went through all that and um, it ha had to be reported and proper groups came out and spoke to different boards and commission, it was decided upon then, because nobody was trying to you know, trash and burn or anything like that, to commission, and um, it was then Brian Sullivan. I know I had some role mm -hmm. in it because I was, very passionate about it, but I wanted just to start to go down the road and do the right thing, and then, so that's why we had DOR come out. They came out with their recommendations. This was one or seven or one of 10. I will say, um, as back then, I also wanted to take just about all of their recommendations in terms of uh, town school finance department and having a, an assistant or a co. I realize, recognize that's not what we're doing with this Warren article. We're just taking one of those seven steps or tenants, as I call it. Um, but I have said in the past, and I'll say in the future, I'd like to continue on with another re recommendation of the DOI report. And I think my colleagues here um, on the Board of Selectmen, as well as my colleagues on the school committee, I think that's something, it would be a much more productive conversation regardless of whether anything comes out of it now than it would have been eight or nine years ago. So um, for me, uh, commissioning another study, setting up another study group, it, it's you know enough already. You know This started nine years ago, and I think for myself personally, I've, I've been as respectful and civil in terms of what was put on my plate and, and try to move forward in a positive action, and I just want to keep continuing down the road, so. Sure. Uh, I understand that, and I think one of the emphasis at that time, uh, and I had just come on the school committee at that time, was uh, the $1.5 million, and that aspect of it there. But as Mr. Kiro remembers, he was still on the school committee. One of the aspects of, of the study, and it's not necessarily in this part, was uh, taking over uh, the school finances and stuff, and I vehemently Pose that since 1993, prior to 93, the school committee literally uh, micromanaged the whole system. Since 1993, we hold three powers: hiring the superintendent, policy, and budget, and tantamount to that. And I see my fear going down the road with an appointed treasurer it may not be in this one at this time, but it's the next step going down there is giving up one of those prerogatives. And that part, right. we'll save that for another time. Thank I you. guess I asked the board to share with the community the, the, the rationale. Is it the same? And I question that. If it isn't the same, please bring it forward. Definitely. Thank you. And we'll look to the then chairman of the board come town meeting, um, as well as any comments we want to add. Yes, name and address for the record, wow. stranger. <laughs> Hi, Dean Carmen, 29 Kilsyth Road. Um, I'm going to take a slightly different tack to Mr. Hainer in that I'm going to ask 
that you, it's kind of weird I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you to vote no action on this, but not for the point of creating a full-blown study committee where we talk about town finances and things like that. I think that's past. I do. I think we're, um, I think we have, an, we have a path of an integrated finance department. I think we've studied it three times. I think it's time to accept it. I think what we haven't done is looked fully at specifically the role of the treasurer, because I think in the past it inherently became a personal discussion in these matters. And, and I think it's important to do that because the treasurer's job is really three jobs. It's the treasurer, the collector of taxes, and the parking clerk. So I'm going to stipulate up front and say there's really no policy involved in collecting taxes. It's an implementation job. It's a professional job. It should be handled as such. But the treasurer's job has a lot of policy matters. It has, an it has investment policy, it has cash management policy, and it has debt policy. Now, we could, we, you can look at it and you can say many things. You can look at it and you can say, well, maybe that should be split into two roles, a treasurer and a collector. Maybe you can say it should be a part-time treasurer. Maybe you could say it would be a treasurer committee of three. I don't, I, I don't know. But I think it's sort of odd to go to town meeting and recommend appointing three positions without knowing exactly what the answer is. Um, and, and I also think there's, I, I would like to say that there isn't a great sense of urgency involved right now for the spring. Um, I'm guessing we're gonna have a fall town meeting um, I, I'm going to guess that whoever's elected treasurer isn't going to do the job full time. Um, I'm going to guess that they're going to have the town manager find a full time professional person to run the office, which amazingly is allowed to do under um, the town bylaws. There's a section nine under the treasurer's laws that allows that to happen. And so there isn't this great urgency right now to, um, to, to, to try to get the position appointed or, or get the vote passed at town meeting and we wait a full year for the um, election because I, I think a lot of what the, a lot of the commonalities that you all want, that I think some people here want, can really be achieved through bylaw changes. I mean, just like how the um, assessor's office was, you know, moved under the town manager through bylaw, that wasn't moved under through ballot. And, and so that's just, that's just my thought because I think for, for, for the sake of maybe taking a leap here that between the five of you and the person who may be elected treasurer, um, there's probably not a heck of a lot of difference in, in thoughts. It's just, you know, stepping back and saying, how do we, um, how do we pull this all together in, in, a, in a very detailed level of the various functions of that department? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Carmen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so do you, th so, Making the treasurer not be elected does have to go to the ballot. Yes, yeah, sure. and so do you um, think, is that something you think we should be doing a year from now, like in spring 2018? Or by, by doing no action now, are you thinking that we should be doing it in 2019? Or, or, or yeah, well, what are your I, thoughts? I think we should take a small amount of time to just sort of think about, if you just focus, so forget, again, not consolidated finance, talk about the treasurer's office in particular, and, and just say, how does the functions there fit into Arlington government? And because, you know, we have a very, I'm just gonna make this up, it's sort of an Ill illustrative example, is um, we have a strong capital planning committee, and they along the way, if you look at your capital planning book, set bonding, they have bonding recommendations. Now what's really odd about the current framework of the town is that the treasurer isn't actually required to follow the recommendations of the capital planning committee. I mean, if you really think about that, it's insane. Um, it, it just is. And, and so maybe we come back and we say, um, if we come back in the fall and we say that the, you know, the chair of the capital planning committee will be the treasurer for debt matters. And whatever comes out of the capital planning committee, we do. And, you know, and maybe on the investment side, we say, okay, we have this, we'll formalize what I think is the trust fund commissioners. And whoever we have is our chair of the trust fund commissioners. And that, that's kind of what I'm saying. So I, don't, I think in some ways you could change the law through bylaws. You could have a scenario, I guess, Dan White, where you could, you could have a 
full-time treasurer, you could have a part-time, elect, full-time elected treasurer, you could have a part-time elected treasurer, you could have, um, you could have an appointed treasurer. I mean, you could, I mean, let's just, to me, it's just, let's figure it out. There is, I don't think there's this great sense of urgency to just sort of go through the weeds. Because right now, I don't think a strict appointment answers the questions I just asked. It doesn't answer the question. How, okay, so if you say the Capital Planning Committee can be completely ignored by the treasurer, how does this vote fix that? Okay, and of course, you know, being on the finance committee for many, many years, that's a topic that's near and dear to my heart, is, you know, the capital planning recommendations come up and maybe they get changed or whatnot. And, you know, and I think that's the same thing when you're looking down the road with schools. You know, all these big school projects, we're going to buy them 20 years, we're going to buy them 30 years. You know, how, how do these kind of work out in the end? That's just my thought, is you take some time, just sit back, think about the role of the treasurer, how it should fit into the larger organization, and, you know, I would assume, now really fine-tuning on timeline, I'm going to guess we're going to have a town meeting in the fall. We always seem to have one in the fall now. It just seems to be the way it is. Um, so we have a town meeting in the fall. If you guys want to go ahead and appoint it, it still hits then, and it goes on the ballot in April. So that would be my suggestion. Mr. Grayley? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure this is a question for Dean, but we are, we are faced with the issue of we've got to have a parking clerk the day after that election. <coughs> that is not necessarily the treasurer. That's our appointment, as you know, I'm sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just, we've got to deal with that. Yeah. You know, if you're talking about someone's part-time all of a sudden, can, we going to appoint them, uh, appoint them parking clerk? Probably not. Okay. Well, I don't know. We have to deal with that. They're the, they're the parking it's not automatic uh, as part of the treasurer as you positioned it. Right. Okay. okay. You're the board of select. Thanks. <coughs> I have some ponderances, but I want to hear from Paul this. Paul Olson, Precinct 19, 89 Wright Street. Um, I just have a few <coughs> very quick comments because I know everybody's a little tired. I think there are three basic options regarding Article 19. Yes, no, and a study group or committee of some kind. I think the, ans the yes option has the real possibility of reenacting the 2011 town meeting debate that was opinion-based rather than fact-based. The no vote solves the problem temporarily, but that doesn't put the issue to rest one way or another. I think a study group of private citizens uh, appears to be the best option identifying the important facts, issues, and hopefully what is best for the town rather than a study group of elected, appointed, or full-time senior managers. In all honesty, I think the unfortunate part of the 2011 debate was uh, it wasn't terribly informed, but it was very passionate, and it really hardened positions uh, for a number of people. And I think with the emotion that's running in this town as seen tonight regarding the sanctuary issue, I'm afraid that we're going to have that kind of a debate all over again that's not really going to get to the heart of the matter. And I think it would be in the best interest of the town if we could temporarily postpone the issue to where town meeting has a, a worthwhile report of an agreed upon set of facts and issues, uh, pro and con, of an appointed versus an elected treasurer. And then in 2018, the town meeting, then the the town meeting then could make a worthwhile decision. Hopefully an informed decision based on fact rather than just opinion. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> oh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. I'll uh, ask you to count me as uh, a no recommendation on the Warren article for two reasons. I'll save my typically over-impassioned uh, speech for town meeting on, on um, my, my love of having as many uh, of uh, uh, my representatives in, in local government uh, elected and reachable and immediately answerable uh, to, to the people they serve. Uh, but the point I'll make tonight is that uh, we, we do have a rare opportunity coming up. Uh, only the second change in uh, incumbency in, in the Office of the Treasurer in Arlington since 1972. This gives us uh, a chance <coughs> to uh, see a new person in action uh, by a new board with uh, present day 
uh, uh, concerns in, in front of them all. And uh, as uh, my predecessor at the microphone, Mr. Carmen, said, let's see what happens in the uh, new, uh, new treasurer's uh, uh, nascent administration and see if the board can achieve through uh, dialogue and cooperation uh, with the newly elected treasurer, uh, the goals and objectives that it has uh, uh, foremost uh, for, for um, uh, you know, see, seeing the way the town's finances are carried forward into the future. And perhaps uh, through uh, cooperation, uh, these very same goals can be achieved uh, with uh, less of a change to the town uh, charter than uh, uh, taking one elected office off the ballot. Thanks. Hey, Mr. Greeley. Uh, well, um, I, I really think uh, Dean raised uh, some interesting points. However, I'm going to move that we recommend favorable action on this, so we will discuss it and have lots of opportunities to do so. I think it's been studied quite clearly. To me, it has nothing to do with whether people are elected capable. I think uh, the uh, last two have been quite capable uh, as treasurers. Uh, but uh, to me, this is about coordinating our, a, a financial management as we've started with the Board of uh, Assessors now, uh, reporting into the manager. But I, I think we would have great benefit coordinating. I mean, we've seen for years a problem of having different computing systems between uh, departments and stuff. So I think bringing this up to town meeting, and people should be allowed to be passionate if they choose to do so, uh, is something we should do, and some of these issues will be brought up and discussed. So I recommend favorable action. Motion by Mr. Greeley. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn. So um, I've, I believe that uh, we should have moved towards an appointed treasurer uh, model. And, so, and I think that the speaker, there are a lot of really good points. I'll, I'll hit, get them in order. Uh, Bill. Uh, when I have been a supporter of this in the past, it wasn't my statement. I, I, w I would I would very strongly disagree. It was about competency, and it was about um, effective governance. And I think that um, part was part of what might have sounded like competency, but it isn't. But it is uh, that I think that we can draw from a stronger pool by looking to professionals than by look than by doing it elected. And so, which isn't to and that's, that's part of it. And the second thing is that I think that we can get a lot of, uh, we can perform our finance functions better if we are aligned under a single person. And that is, and I believe that this position should be professional as opposed to political, which is why I think the town manager and his designees should be the person who drive it. Um, we have the, uh, up here we have the pleasure slash pain of being the political, but we, and then we, but we let the town manager and his, <laughs> people be professional. So that's my, so my reason I support it isn't that I think that we don't get competent treasurers or we can't get competent treasurers, but I think that we can run more efficiently and effectively. That's why I would, that's why I supported it then, it's why I, I still uh, support it now. Um, Dean, interesting, and I agree that there are a whole bunch of questions that still need to be settled, but I'm okay with pushing forward in trying to, in putting this on the ballot in a year from now in 2018 and uh, working out those questions as we get, you know, we've, we've still got a lot. I understand you're asking for time till September and I think, or, you know, until whenever we have, if we have a special town meeting, um, but I'm okay pushing f forward faster because I really think this should happen. And so I don't want to uh, wait around. Uh, Mr. Ruderman, I'm going to respectfully disagree. I understand that, uh, I understand your argument, I think I do, about uh, wanting more elected people, and uh, I definitely believe that elected people should be held to, you know, you, you don't like what, what we're doing, then vote us out. I absolutely believe that. Um, but this is, but I, this is again where I think there's a difference between the professional versus the political, and uh, the treasurer does not have, an, uh, as the town has evolved, um, the, the political aspects like the, the have, have dropped away and it really is much more about an execution job. And so that's why in this case, uh, I respectfully uh, disagree with you. Uh, and Paul, I, I agree that um, the last debate was it, was, it was hard and I'm, I really just, and 
but I still think it's the right thing for us to do, and I'm just I'm hoping that we can come to this, especially because we are at this time of transition, where we, it can we be less about personality, um, and that may just be fierce optimism on my heart, but that's where that's where I am. So for all those reasons, um, I'm going to support Mr. Greeley's motion. Uh, ditto. <laughs> and um, I do want to say that um, it's been a long road and, you know, I want to get started. I want to put the shovel, break some ground and get moving. Um, all the uh, points brought up by the speaker, speakers before us, I anticipate that will be flushed out as we move along. And I think we really need to s start this process. It's been highlighted where it, this is an <coughs> opportune um, time to start that process as well as further conversations down the road in terms of some staff um, changes, which is not part of this Warren article. Um, but I definitely want to really put s something to this, especially um, I would say I'd be a bit concerned, but it wouldn't be my final say that if we went through this and we basically took the uh, elected treasurer and came up with, you know, we had two, three, four, five little, not baby, part-time treasurers or... So, I mean, I, I will just say, if I had my druthers right now, I'm looking to define a process where we hire, either through an election or through an appointed treasurer, um, one person, and then she or he reports to the town manager or whatever. I, I, I can be convinced otherwise, but when I hear sort of convolution, you know, capital planning and the capital planning committee shall have, you know, ultimate say, say on that. I'm just thinking of not only getting my head around that and selling it to the citizens of the town, I think it really convolutes that particular area, even for citizen um, <coughs> involvement in terms of, you know, I have this thing where I used to, I have a question or a concern or whatever. Uh, a, a capital expenditure. Um, I used to go to the treasurer for that or whomever, but now it could possibly be two, three, four, five part-time people. Um, that kind of put a big question in my mark, and for a minute there I was thinking of, well, maybe we should move forward on this, but um, I'm going to stick with where, the, where we originally started that I think, you know, we need to... We need to start to do this to have the conversation. I think from what I'm getting from everybody who were on who were on the pro and con side is that you know everyone's really recognizing this is the opportunity for us to do that, um, and I think it would be the best environment for us um, to actually start that process and make it effective. So I, I agree with Mr. Dunn, and I will be supporting this. Um, Mr. Byrne. Yeah. So um, thank you very much. And back in. What, 2012 last debate that we had around this. I, I was pretty involved in it, and it was one of the, the first, you know, real issues, um, first committees I uh, was a part of as a member of this board. And um, I still do believe that there is a need for a professional treasurer. Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily um, feeling strong enough not to give... Um, perhaps Mr. Carmen or whoever the next appointed or next elected treasurer is uh, a year to try to implement <coughs> some of what we heard tonight. Um, I, I think, um, you know, having a professional treasurer is, um, you know, it sounds like the direction that he's most likely going in. Um, I am a little bit, um, not concerned, but I'd be interested in the coordination um, between the town manager's office and the town treasurer's office. I, I think that it's, um, you know, I think it's clear that that, that could be improved, and, and I think moving forward it, um, you know, that's certainly a conversation or many conversations that needs, uh, that need to take place. Um, you know, if we take the time to, um, <coughs> until the election happens, um, I think we can have fairly productive conversations, and, um, if we take, if we, you know, kind of fight this tooth and nails from right now, I, I think maybe those relationships uh, could possibly fray and those conversations become, you know, a, a little bit, a, a little bit more difficult. Um, and, and so I, I am, I am pretty torn. Um, I, I can see this going both ways right now. Um, so I, I think that, you know, I, seems like the board is going to be supporting this. And I'm looking forward to the town meeting debate, but I, I think I am um, going to vote no action and 
give Dean the opportunity to kind of work with us and the town staff over the next year. Mr. Carroll. <clears throat> I, I think obviously I've also, also supported this. I mean, I see the same um, <clears throat> notifications we get every month from the DOR um, Bureau of Local Services, and periodically they report on the percentage of of town treasurers that have gone to professional uh, positions. Um, I also note that in our um, packets here, we actually received a memorandum from uh, Mr. Bellifer, who was our elected um, town treasurer and collector of taxes for 33 years and also supports now moving toward um, an appointed um, uh, professional um, town treasurer and collector with some caveats around the uh, Dolls for Scholars uh, program. I have to admit, having some pause when Mr. Carmen, you know, presented um, some of these ideas, and I'm wondering though if if progress along that that line is really mutually exclusive from from placing this before town meeting. The only question I have is there is a question as to whether or not the town treasurer and collector of taxes can be addressed as two separate positions, and we have we have here in the in the the um, some of the draft language we've provided, a single ballot question, making the, the town treasurer and collector of taxes um, an appointed position, but I think they, they are actually logically two, two separate positions, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, am I off base here? I know we've always treated them as one. We've always vested them in a single individual, but I, I believe that they are actually two positions. I don't know. codified in Legally? Legally? No, Same not. town treasurer Legally. and collector of taxes are two separate positions, even though in the past we've lumped them into we've, one. We've always vested them I, in I one. I think I would say they can be two separate positions as they can be one shared position. And as you're stating, they're currently treated as one position, but they could be certainly treated as separate positions as well. And, and so I reckon, no, the reason I ask is, uh, it, I don't know, it might be confusing to the electorate, but I'm wondering if it were two questions, shall the tre town treasurer be an appointed position shall the town, the, the collector of taxes be an appointed position. Does that leave open options for some of the creative thinking that Mr. Carmen has um, put out on the floor? Or is it just confused matters? I, I think that, in, in, uh, Doug Heim, Town Council, I think that from the perspective of the ballot question, um, it seems to me that the, in Arlington, the positions were consolidated at some point in time. And so, you know, you're only talking about one position right now in terms of transitioning it from elected to appointed. And um, I'm not sure if I heard Mr. I'm not sure I understood everything um, as well as all the folks here who have been part of this debate for a long time. But I think what Mr. Carmen is saying is it's the treasurer's position that really makes the policy decisions that the vote is relevant to, I don't know if there's a, so I don't know that it would achieve much by having two separate ballot okay. questions. Okay. I'll support the motion on the okay. floor. Just please briefly, please, we still have so much more to do. <coughs> I just warn you that if you make them two ballot questions and one passes and one doesn't, that could be really embarrassing to the town. That's all. Okay. Um, yeah, can, can I say something? Okay. All right, the last, last chop at it, it's 11. Just so everyone's on the same page, um, you guys vote for this. Town meeting approves it. No, let me back. Let me just make this simpler. I think Doug can disagree with me, but the Massachusetts general law is pretty clear that um, the change from elected to appointed doesn't occur until the end of the treasurer's term. I just want to point that out because if you're if everybody's thinking here that it, it hits here 17, 18, and then is appointed, that's not true. Even if it were to, you guys were to pass it, I mean, we're passing the, the citizen were to pass it in 18, it wouldn't take effect till 20. Thank you. Okay, and a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Four to one. Uh, next, Article 20, vote email accounts for members of public bodies. I don't see the proponent, Mr. Loretti, here. And I believe... Move no action. Move no action by Mr. Greeley, seconded Second. by Mr. Who was it? Kiro. But I would like to point out again, Mr. Loretti, who sponsors a Warren article, does not choose to participate in the process 
and be here at the hearing, but it's unnecessary. We've already done this. Move no action. Okay, on a motion by Mr. Greerly of no action, seconded by Mr. Caro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We go to Article 60, Resolution Supporting State and Federal Legislation. <clears throat> That promotes greater transparency in political donations and limits the influence of money in politics. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Kowalski. I'm at 60 Pleasant Street. Uh, thank you for the late night. Uh, this resolution isn't nearly as flashy as the Sanctuary City one, uh, but I think it is still important. Uh, what I would like is for uh, the town of Arlington to adopt a non-binding resolution in support of the American Anti-Corruption Act. Uh, this is a statewide, or this is a, a part of a nationwide nonpartisan effort uh, starting at the local level in order to reduce the influence, influence of big money in politics. Uh, I'm motivated by an organization called Represent.us. Uh, this long-term goal, the long-term goal of this uh, organization is to gain enough popular support uh, to pass this type of legislation on the state level and we're using the initiative process to do so. And eventually we'd like to pass it on the federal level. That's a big goal, but we're starting small, we're starting locally. Uh, now I'm not trying to say that Arlington has any sort of corruption problems uh, or that we have big money in our politics, uh, but by passing this uh, non-binding resolution, we would show support uh, for the statewide legislation that we're hoping to uh, get done. Uh, a similar legislation was passed recently in South Dakota. Uh, this Anti-Corruption Act has several parts to it uh, that aim to stop conflicts of interest and political bribery, uh, provide transparency for political donations, and fix elections through measures like redistricting to prevent gerrymandering and to provide public funds for campaigns. Uh, a government should serve its people, uh, but lobbying groups and large political donations have circumvented that purpose. And I have a, a bunch of research that shows this, and I just want to cite one study. Uh, in 2014, professors at Princeton and Northwestern published results from a study that looked at more than 20 years of data to answer a very simple question. Does the government represent the people? And their study took data from nearly 2,000 public opinion surveys and compared it to policies that ended up becoming law. In other words, they compared what the public wanted to what the government actually did. And what they found was that the opinions of 90% of Americans have essentially no impact at all. Conversely, they found that the opinions of big money interests uh, do have a substantial impact for that. And I do have a source for that, that, that study. Uh, so is it possible to completely remove the influence of money in politics? Not likely. Uh, but the Anti-Corruption Act is a good step towards better accountability there. And this resolution will be a small step in order to help support that. <coughs> Mr. Byrne. Um, I have a question. Excuse Where me. in the resolution it, it talks about preventing lobbyists from donating to politicians, and um, then, it, but what do you say, even though that those donations are transparent and recorded uh, through the Secretary of State site? Um, so it seems like that, I don't know, if it just might not really fit into the other themes that, you know, this resolution is hitting on? Right, there's a lot of components to this resolution, and if you look at the Anti-Corruption Act, there's a lot of components to that because it's trying to cover a fair amount of bases on that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know how to state one way or the other on. No, I, I, I just question, I, you know, yeah. I, I do work in government affairs for a, a quasi-state agency, or we're not actually a quasi-state agency, but at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and, you know, and while we, you know, I don't really think I make many donations, I, you know, feel like this might be targeting, you know, a, a certain group here. And I don't know if I'm really comfortable putting my name on this tonight. Mr. Dunn? So, uh, in general, I really think that town meeting um, is best focused on, uh, on local issues. And, you know, I will say, you know, obviously, I'm... Tonight was the exception that proved the rule because I really do strongly believe in the sanctuary town, but uh, it is it's fairly it's fairly frequent for uh, 
groups of citizens like yourself who are passionate about things, which I, I'm glad. I just don't think the town meeting is, is, is the right venue. So um, I'm gonna move that we recommend no action. And I'm not gonna, and it's not ab um, about the content. It's, it's about so much as about the, the relevancy. And I don't think, uh, because I, uh, yeah. Motion of no action by Mr. Dunn, seconded by? Second. Mr. Byrne. Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you. Um, and I'm sorry, you're here to, to this late hour. Um, but I, I do kind of um, echo this. I, I think the, you probably heard some of the hesitation on the part of the moderator at the beginning of this evening about resolutions. He actually handles them in a, in a specific way because <clears throat> there's a reason for that, because the town meeting members, the, this town meeting has held the record for the longest town meeting going 15, 16, 17 nights, something, something like that. Um, to the point where we had had difficulty actually even recruiting people to run. We had vacancies all over the town, so there've been a lot of efforts to try to to try to slim down the um, the town meeting. And this is one of, unfortunately, this is one of one of the ways. Um, the sanctuary town resolution related directly to lo a local policy matter, but as far <coughs> as statements on national um, or, or or state um, legislation. I think what we've done in the past and what I've done in the past is um, offered during the announcement section of, of one of the, every, every night at town meeting, it begins with announcement uh, time. Any resident of the town is permitted to get up and, and speak for a limited part. Is it limited to three minutes? I think it's three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's three minutes for announcements uh, to speak, speak to the entire body of the town meeting. And what's been done in the past is proponents for these resolutions you know, I'm happy to introduce you, or I'm sure one of my colleagues would be happy to, to introduce you um, so that you could get up before the town meeting and invite all town meeting members who, who wish to to, to uh, sign on. There's always a break in the, in the middle, and there's always a, at, the, at the beginning. Um, the only other thing I'll say is that I, I discussed this today with um, Representative Garbally, and he's more than willing also to meet with you about the, the uh, legislation to try to... Uh, um, you know, learn more about it, and and um, you know potentially, you know, assist you in, in forwarding it at the at the state level. So I think those are a couple of the things that we could help do. And if you need that introduction also to our delegation, I think we all have good relations with with all three members of our state delegations as well, and we're happy to help make those introductions as well. So. Thank you. <clears throat> um, okay, we have a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion, comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. staying so late. Um, we do still have three more items on the agenda, but let's see final votes and comments. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. No. So I, um, oh, you're not may, may I, Madam Chair, so I, the, the town council was tasked with either doing uh, the really incredible amount of work you did in preparing for the sanctuary town article or prepare final votes and comments and I told them to prepare the sanctuary town matters so those are not prepared for the board tonight okay so um, all right so move to table by mr. Grayley seconded by second mr. Don all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed unanimous vote we'll now go to agenda item 15 endorsement of purple heart community designation <laughs> our town manager mr. Chapterlane. thank you madam chair uh, this is simply uh, I'm looking for a go-ahead from the board Jeff Chunglo our veteran service officer and the Veterans Council took a vote to request that this board designate Arlington as an honorary purple heart community and also that we then designate Mass Ave as our honorary purple heart Avenue uh, if the board was so inclined to endorse that, uh, we would have a proclamation drafted and have signs made up that would be placed uh, on Mass Ave, double-sided signs uh, nearby both the Central and Highland Fire Stations that would designate Mass Ave as an honorary Purple Heart Avenue. Didn't want to go through drafting the proclamation or creating the signs if the board didn't like the idea. If you do, we'll come back at a future meeting this spring and have an official ceremony for such designation. Motion to improve endorsement of Purple so moved. Heart. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further discussion and comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. The next um, request for a board designee, I'm going to let the manager explain um, exactly what this would be. and. Um, I will be unable to do this. Uh, I have spoken with Mr. Greeley, um, who I believe um, is willing to uh, accept this, but Mr. Chapdelaine, if you could. Thank you, Not Madam. at the meetings tonight, but <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> 
needs incentive. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as the board knows, it issued an RFP for the disposition of 1207 Mass Ave. Uh, the town has received one proposal, and uh, after review by myself, town council, and direct, uh, the director of planning and community development, we have found that one proposal to be responsive in meeting the minimum quality criteria, but the RFP did require both myself and a designee of the board to review and score that proposal before making a final recommendation to the board. So tonight I'm asking for that board designee. We will review and score the proposal and bring back a final recommendation to the board at an upcoming meeting. Is there a motion? Or can I appoint Mr. Greeley or someone? Okay, I'd like so to moved. move by Mr. Dunn, Second. seconded by Mr. Carroll. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye, aye. Are those opposed, unanimous vote. Um, if we now come to agenda item 17, Mr. Greeley. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, we all send our love and hopes out to Marie Kripelka, who has gone through, I think it's her 37th uh, surgery or something, but um, we, we hope she's back as soon as possible. But it has come to light, <coughs> we, we have not really uh, established a process for a time like this. Marie's been out for a couple of weeks and will probably be for a couple more weeks. Uh, so uh, what I'd like to move is that uh, we set a policy going forward that we empower the chair uh, in situations such as this to uh, name, in this case, Marianne Sullivan as, uh, as the uh, acting ad administrator and uh, um, also <coughs> Fran as the acting office manager. And uh, through you, Madam Chair, to also work with Adam and figure out the compensation. Motion by Mr. Grilly. Is there a second? A second. I have Mr. a Byrne. comment as well. And it's just that perhaps we should update the selectman's manual to reflect that. Yeah. I was waiting for the vote on that. But as soon as we approve that, he that's what we're doing. Are there any questions, comments, Mr. Dunn? Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's uh, uh, jumping ahead to Mr. Greeley's favorite, uh, to the handbook. Uh, I think it should, we should make sure that it includes notification of the rest of the board and town manager, but, in, the, but yeah, in, yeah, in that context, yeah. I think, yep. absolutely. Here, yep. 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 absolutely. Okay, and a motion by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are those opposed? Unanimous vote. Correspondence received. Motion to receive by so Mr. Byrne. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Kiro. Um, any comments, questions from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Move to suspend new business. <laughs> so moved. Okay. Um, oh, or second, <laughs> unless there's something desperate. Is, is anybody is anybody burning with with a necessity? Okay, so with that, I uh, will take a motion to adjourn by. Move to adjourn. Mr. Grilly, seconded by. Second. Mr. Cure, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Unanimous vote. Nay. No, just kidding. <laughs> aye.